The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Oh, yeah! This is the Cigar Authority. Have uh, you any imported cigars? The authority on everything cigar, in and out of the cigar industry. We're on a mission from God. With your host... A jelly donut! David Garofalo. How did it get here? Mr. Jonathan. I hear you, <laughs> and I care. Barry Stein. I can use my spare glove compartment underwear as a napkin. And Ed Sullivan. They don't have a listing for Mr. Wonderful. What uh, spelling did you use? It's time to light them up. Smoke if you got them. It's time for the Cigar Authority. I got a fever, and the only prescription is more powerful. Light them up, light them up, light them up, everybody. Saturday, January 12th, 2019. How do you act when you go into a cigar shop? How should you act when you go into a cigar shop? And while we're at it, we review cigars here on the Cigar Authority. Let's hear how people review us. Welcome, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. And you're listening to the Cigar Authority, now in its ninth year, making it the longest continually running cigar podcast. Awarded the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine. Awarded the Top 10 Educational Podcast by Podbean four years in a row. The Cigar Authority is the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar Radio at its finest. The Cigar Authority is a proud member of the United Podcast Network. Catch the podcast on demand at any time or our daily blog at thecigarauthority.com. All right. And the United Podcast Network has a new show up and running since last week. It is Dueling Comedians. I've watched it. And? Entertaining. It's the first. Very entertaining. First of it. It'll get better. But um, interviewing Comedians, one comedian interviewing a comedian, then they go to duel. And it's a one bit for laugh. And laugh track Larry gets on there and judges what it is. And then they have a winner. Uh, something new, something different. I like that laugh track Larry. Yeah, you should. Yeah. You should. Mm-hmm. I think he's kind of douchey. Yeah. Cool. Like he's like a Mr. Jonathan type? Yeah. Or? Douchey like that? Way douchier than that. Really? <laughs> is that possible? <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> Impossible. Okay, uh, so uh, beginning of the year, and uh, we we actually ended the year with a Perdomo Champagne. Yes. And uh, here we are uh, off and running in 2019. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Are we doing everything that we possibly can not to smoke the cigar of the year? We are going to get to that later. We'll get to that. Are you sure? Yes. Because I thought maybe this was going to be the one year that we just never smoked the cigar of the year. We have smoked that cigar anyway. Not. As the Since cigar of the it's year. been Cigar of the Year. But this is part of the Cigar Authority Care Package, so we have to smoke it, mm-hmm. and today's the day. And the care package is open once again. That's it. Care package is open. All those people that said, when are you going to open the care package? I want to get in on the care package. Why don't you get the care package going? It's open. It's oh, open. It's ready. Yeah. That's right. But uh, it won't be for a long time, so don't mm-hmm. sit there and think about it and say, maybe... At the end of the month or yeah. whatever. Do it now. Do it now. You go to where? Uh, you can go to the easiest way to find it is to go to the cigarauthority.com. On the top right hand side will be the link to buy the care package. It'll take you directly to twoguyscigars.com where you can make the purchase. Okay. And what's going to happen is it's going to cost you 20 bucks a month and you will get charged immediately. But you won't get your first care package till the end of the to month. To the end of the month because they don't ship until about the 28th. Yeah. So, but do it now. Um, what kind of interest you think you're going to get in a few days uh, with that twenty dollars? So, do it now so that you're in, and then as it's going on, each month we're going to hit the card at the beginning of the end of the month and then ship it out right away. So that's the way it's going to go. And it's up and running now, right? Up As and running. Talking. You can go. You can purchase it right away. We speak and yep. tell you about a cigar that's in the care package. Had you already been a member of it, you could be smoking along with us. And that cigar is the Podomo, Podomo Habano Bourbon Barrel Age Connecticut, which is manufactured in Nicaragua by Podomo. We're about to light up the 6x54 Epicure, which features a six-year age Connecticut wrapper. Plus, it gets another six months inside bourbon barrels. Binder and filler from Nicaragua. A single cigar will set you back $8.69. Why a box of 24? $169.99, which is a savings of just over $38, or 18% off the box price at twoguyscigars.com. If you're too far away from a brick and mortar retailer that carries it, try twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com. All right, Jonathan and I went, was that last year? I think it was. <coughs> 
It's two years now. Two years? My God, time The reason fun. that he puts the um, the wrappers in the bourbon barrels is so he gets an additional fermentation. You can only take tobacco up to Perdomo's 160 yeah. degrees so many times, and then it just won't ferment to get that warm again. So he puts it in the bourbon barrels, and the additional pressure allows him to get an extra fermentation, which does nothing more than just smooth things out all that much more. It puts a finish yeah. on the tobacco. Even in color. It actually changed the color of it. So if you look at the wrapper before you light the cigar on there, you'll see how well, how even it is. There's not going to be any tobacco leaf that's going to be perfectly colored all the way through because it's a leaf, right? But you look at this and you're going to see, wow, it's not that, that different. Um, it, it's pretty smooth out, I guess, right. is the best word for it. So... Uh, there you go there. Foot band on the bottom of it. Don't forget to take the foot band off. Been there, done that. Right. We've all made the mistake. I don't care if, how professional you are or whatever. But um, at least uh, I'm telling you now as, as you're listening on, uh, don't make that mistake. It's a golden color, and so is the wrapper on it. Maybe you'll make that mistake. Um, all right. Take a smell of this because you were at the factory. Does that not bring you back? Right. right and I was are. thinking that I was taking a whiff of it before the show started. Especially the wrapper, it, because we were there for quite a while. Right we, in that room yeah. where the barrels are, because there's no ammonia in there. Yeah. The, the, the tobacco is done fermenting, and he's getting that final fermentation. There's no ammonia in that room, and this is exactly what that room smells like. That's it, and it brings you back to that moment. When I tell you when I smoked that Aladino, and I'm back to way back when yeah. that is, that's exactly what happened. The sense of smell is such a powerful oh, way to pull, you, pull your memories out. So let's give it a cut. It's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo, Perdomo is the brand, while all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Uh, we had a little um, text chat with Nick Perdomo yesterday. Possibly we're going to be having some event that's never been done before. I didn't even get to tell you this morning. I forgot about it until we're smoking the Perdomo made me think about it. I'll tell you a little about it. I don't want to say anything in case it doesn't out happen. here because it's not by any means a uh, guarantee. Yeah, set in stone. But somebody, yeah, somebody, and then it comes back to me, and I said yes, and Nick says yes. So maybe some, maybe a big deal for us. I'm in. Yeah. Anything that has to do with Perdomo, I'm in. Yeah. Cool. All right. I know what you guys are wondering. Cold draw on this cigar before you get to that, and we light it. it. Tastes like a Malamar. There's dark chocolate. There's marshmallow. There's a little graham cracker. Yeah. It tastes like a Malamar. I got the graham cracker pot with the marshmallow. Mm. Yeah. It just tastes like well-aged tobacco to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ed Sullivan. All right. We're going to light our cigar today with a, a different-looking lighter. We haven't done this one in a while. This is the Vertigo Puffer. The Vertigo Puffer is a soft flame lighter that really is designed to light a pipe. But that doesn't mean you can't use it for cigars. What's great about this is it has all the tools that you need to clean out your pipe, built in like a Swiss Army knife, but then you can close everything and just take the poker out, and now you have a way to take your cigar all the way down to the nub. When you're smoking something good like this Perdomo, bourbon barrel aged, Epicure, Connecticut, you're going to want to smoke it past the band, and now you get that option all on board with your Vertigo Puffer. It does feature the Vertigo Big Ass Tank, and it retails for $19.99. That's did you the mention, Vertigo Puffer. Did you mention Soft Flame? This it, is a yep, Soft Flame. It is a Soft Flame. the Jet Flame. Correct. I smoke indoors almost exclusively, plus it's like zero out. It's ridiculous yes. right now. Wow, is it cold this morning? Um... And I like a soft flame. Um, you know, we're always showing jet flame lighters, their pinpoint accuracy and something, but there's something about the old school soft flame. It, the only problem I have with a soft flame is sometimes it's a little bit more difficult with a Connecticut wrapper because it's going to be a professional. Yeah, you got to know how to do it as opposed to. If you need me to show you, I'll show you after the show. You will never have a problem with from a soft flame from again. The center up, center up, center right. up. So, so um, this is a fuller-bodied Connecticut. Grandfather's Connecticut parents? Not at all. No, but it's 
different than the not your grandfather's Connecticut will be spoken in the different so second hour. Not so it's like my, not your it's, grandfather's it's Connecticut. It's my uncle's Connecticut. Yeah, Uncle Tony's it's Connecticut. It's like Yeah, <laughs> you wouldn't understand because you didn't see the the Godfather, but we'll get to that. I have no idea what the two of you are talking. There about. we go. Um, it is, um, I'd say, a six. One to ten, it's a How six. How can you possibly rate this? I know you've smoked I smoke it a million times. Because I hundred times. Le- it's easily. A, easily. Easily and, and it is times. It is a regular go-to for me. I do buy them by the box. I always like to have them available. Uh, my brother, who does not like Connecticut Shade Cigars at all, does not complain when I give this to him. Yeah, this it's is got a, plenty this of is, flavor. This is not a Connecticut. It, there is Connecticut on it, but this is not. You blindfold us, nobody's getting this right. is a Connecticut cigar. Nobody. Uh, champagne, yes, you can, you know, even though it's a little juiced up also, but this one, no way. This is this is more than medium for a Connecticut, more than medium. All right, Six. I'm glad you put in for Connecticut because it's just under medium compared to all the other cigars in the cigar shop. We're right there. We're right there. <laughs> <laughs> and and th- this is the perfect segue to get into how not to act in a cigar <laughs> shop. And that's how not to act. Whatever somebody does says, uh, you know, it's raining out. He says, no, it's not actually pretty bad out there. It's pretty dry. If you consider there's less rain than there is dryness, and that that's where you would go, Cliff Clavin. That's where you would go. <laughs> I'm smart. You're dumb. I'm big. You're little. I'm right. You're wrong. And You've been harping on this for a little while. Like it's bothering you. I think. I, I, I'm. I'm. Y- I'm worried for you because a lot of people don't like you, and that's the reason you're a good guy. And a lot of people don't like you, and this is the reason, and I'm trying to help you. I just wish that you, like, really would just tell me how you feel. I, I'm doing it for, for the good, for, for the good of me and everybody else, but mostly for the good of you. Yeah, if, if you understand it and you yeah, admit it, it's, tough love. it's part of the thing. Tough love. The cigar authority has become the intervention. Of people, <laughs> no, but everybody hears it. We're, we're out there. There's oh, 10, the 20 time. people listening. They, each one of them, hears this and sees. No matter what, I say this is a six, and it's a little above medium. You go, oh, I'm glad you said thing because it's actually a little less than medium. You just have to go there because that's what it is. You said it wrong thing, and I'm trying to help you right. say the right thing. Right. Now, don't you two see that you're in love with each other? <laughs> I think Jonathan, it's just obvious. Has, Jonathan just has the need to get the last word. Uh, I don't know. You know it, it goes back into his childhood. There's really something really sick there that, that happened. <laughs> yeah. wow. You're touched by one uncle and yes. someone doesn't let you hear the end of it. That's it. All right. So uh, years back, this is an old thing that, that was there many, many years ago. And I, I saw it. I had no idea who this guy was, but I thought this was the greatest thing because I've been 34 years in the cigar business now. Uh, working in now, it's been seven, eight different retail stores that I had over these years. And you just see the same mistakes happen all the time. Mm-hmm to the person that comes in the store. Yes, I can do a whole show on what should the cigar shop be doing, and we'll yep. do a show on that. What are they doing wrong or whatever, but you're a new guy going into a cigar shop. What are you supposed to be doing? What's right, what's wrong? Uh, and Miguel Shodell put this together years ago, and I thought he nailed it. Normally, I would, and I reached out to him, and I said, years ago, can I use this? And he says, of course, you have to say it all you want, because he's a, a cigar rep that's all around the country, working now for... Uh, sales manager for uh, Crown Heads. Crown Heads. And um, he saw it, and I said, oh, my God, talk about nailing it. This is exactly the problems that happen in the cigar stores. We see them every single day. I didn't have to tweak it. I didn't have to do anything, although later on we're going to get to some honorable mentions that aren't mentioned in here. But um, this is the Ten Commandments of the Cigar Shop, and th- there's really nothing to change on it, so we'll start at number ten. Always have an extra cigar on hand. Never know when you might run into a brother of the leaf who needs a cigar in a pinch. Maybe you'll make a new friend. Also, I'd say have another cigar if, God forbid, uh, there's something wrong with that cigar or sure. whatever. Um, but that takes me to have a cigar on hand. You're, you shouldn't have a cigar on hand going into the cigar shop, but... You're going to a family function or yeah. a picnic or something. Always, that I think that yeah. ties into more 
Don't show up empty-handed. Somebody might want to enjoy one with you. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that every serious cigar smoker should have two humidors. You should have your humidor for at home where you store your boxes, or maybe it's not big enough to store boxes. You store your cigars there, and you should have a travel humidor, 15-count travel humidor that you can keep with you. And now somebody says, oh, geez, I don't have a cigar. Do you have an extra one? Of course you have an extra one. I like when I'm somewhere and somebody ends up coming over. I'm smoking a cigar and somebody says, oh, cigar smoker, huh? And I say, yeah. And, uh, oh, I like cigars and blah, blah, blah. And isn't it great that I have one on here? I say, would you like one? And they say, I would love one. I've never had anybody say, oh, no, I don't want it. They're coming over here to talk to you. And it's like, oh, my God. Uh, and even, you know, the guy may say, oh, no, I can't go. I got to go right back to such and such or whatever. And that's okay. Here you go. Um, definite, um, you know, you're, as Barry saying, we're at a cookout or something like that. And I'm away from the crowd or something having a cigar. And it will be a magnet to somebody who's interested in right. that and come over. And now I get my little group of people because I had the cigar. And... If I didn't have an extra cigar on me, that's the end of that party. You'd be I'm, just a douche. Right. Um, so it's, it's a good thing. It's, uh, I, have, I have talked to uh, customers over the years that said they have made their biggest deals in their life, salespeople and things like that, because they had an extra cigar on them. And this made a connection that you never would have made right. if they had, hadn't done it. It's unbelievable what a cigar can do uh, and who you can end up meeting and what can end up having. And so extra cigar, awesome thing to do. Thou shalt not be fooled by fake cigars. Those Cubans you bought on the cruise for 50 bucks were fake. Don't go around bragging about them. People are laughing behind your back. It's a true statement. Mm -hmm. Completely true. All you have to do is look at social media for that. People posting glass box Cubans. Mm. They don't make glass yeah. box Cubans. You know, Cubans in the, in the, cell, in the cellophane yeah. and things like that. There's no such thing. Hey, what do you think of this? Uh, or somebody bringing it into you and, you know, oh, I got this. Or showing off that they have this. And you're looking at it and saying, oh, my God. But, you know, what's the answer to do? Funny being a retailer all these years of people come in and say, Dave, can I show you something and tell me if uh, these are real or fake? I said, you don't want to know. If you enjoy the cigar, just enjoy it, like it, and whatever, because I'm going to tell you the truth. You ain't going to like it. Just for you coming up and asking the question, it's, they're absolutely fake. I haven't even looked at them yet. They're 100% absolutely fake because you're asking the question, which means you got... This guy that sold you this deal, you didn't go into a legit cigar shop, Habanos right. dealer, and get them because you'd know it'd, it'd be real. So the, the guy on the but beach. But you also paid. Yeah. The guy on the beach that sold you the cigar, it's not real because they don't sell cigars on the beach. That's not where they, where they belong. And, uh, and, and it's funny that they'll say, I paid 25 bucks for this cigar or something. And I say, oh, well. It's absolutely not real or whatever. And he says, well, I like it. And, you know, now they're getting an attitude or something. They're getting mad at me. And you don't know what to end up saying. And then they go looking around the store and they end up picking up a $5 cigar. And that's what they bring at the register. So you bought that piece of crap for $25 in, in, in uh, some, Mexico uh, yeah. or whatever. And then you come here and it's a $5 cigar. And, and you say, that cigar you got is pretty good. It's pretty good for a $5 cigar. Yes. Third world countries are pretty remarkable in that uh, they run their business, which is what it is. Their yeah. country is a business. Yeah. The same way a regular brick and mortar cigar shop runs their business. We don't want people taking cigars from outside the shop and bringing them in and smoking them in here. Yeah. They don't want people taking already made cigars from other countries' tobacco and bringing those cigars into their country. It's against the law. They don't import cigars into Mexico. They don't import cigars tobacco. Yeah. But not cigars into these third world countries. Yeah. What would you? What kind of Cigar that you think you would buy in Mexico? It has to be Mexican. A Mexican cigar, most likely, right? Yes, they could import stuff and stuff, but mostly you go to Florida, you go to the supermarket in Florida, the oranges at the supermarket are most likely Florida Floridian oranges. oranges. California oranges? You know, wouldn't it be weird? You, you're in Miami and you pick the orange up and say, is this a California orange? They'd probably look at you weird and say, we're, we're yeah, an we, orange. We, we shipped them all the way from California when we freaking grow them yeah. here. It's not happening. Yeah. Okay, thou shalt not go to a cigar event expecting free cigars. If you can't afford one, uh, you shouldn't have gone to the event. If you don't, do not receive a free cigar, enjoy, uh, enjoy the free one. And if you uh, do Spit receive a free cigar yep. uh, or 
enjoy free refreshments, buy something, nobody likes a mooch. Well, back to the first one of, we're going to talk about you after. I don't Correct. know if you care. Maybe you don't care anyway, but yes, that exists. That yeah. there's an event goes on and, oh, it's just a free-for-all. Everybody's store is a business. And they're doing the event to generate some sales. And I don't say you got to go spend a lot. You go and you buy a cigar at a cigar event, right? Yep. And if you ask a rep for a cigar and he tells you no, don't go hating on the brand because he's protecting the store that he's at. And he's also protecting his company because it's now illegal yeah. to give somebody a cigar. Right. You can't give away free tobacco products. Yes, it could be buy one, get one free. Buy three, get one free. Yep. And then the free one becomes a legal thing. Here is a free cigar. That's tempting you to end up smoking the cigar and it becomes an Ill illegal act. Uh, most cigar reps are told not to do that. Yep. Correct. Not to give away a consumer a free cigar. Um, yes, they end up uh, you know, going to the buyer and give them a free cigar. Imagine but you walk into a Ford dealership and you see the Ford rep is there and you get mad at the Ford rep for not giving you an F-150 pickup truck. Yeah. Well, well you just, at least a muffler. You right? have you have all these cars. Just give me one for free. Right. Yeah, it's, it, it's the weirdest thing. And you don't go into the supermarket and the guy's putting the potato chips on the thing and say, do I get a free bag of potato chips or something? But for some reason, it's because there's so much interaction between the consumer and the people doing the day-to-day -day business, I think, is what happens there. Um, they're not to give a free cigar. And when they give a free cigar to the buyer of it, there's a reason for that. It's not they're giving me the cigar I already carry. The cigar they're giving me is the one we do not carry. Correct. And they're trying to get that cigar into the store. And if they end up doing that to the salespeople that happens in the store also, it's also the cigar that we don't carry. Now they're trying to use the salespeople against the, the uh, buyer. buyer of it to try to say, oh, Mr. Jonathan loved the cigar, so why don't you take it on? And that's part of it. You were the buyer there for yep. a while. You, you know you know the games that are play. And there's nothing wrong with that, but that's the idea of the sample of cigars. It's a tool for them to do it. It's not that, oh, we make these cigars, and instead of selling them, we'd like to give them away for free. Nope, they'd like to sell every cigar they could get. Uh, so that's that. Number seven is thou shall not be rude about smoking cigars. We cigar smokers are respectable, tax-paying people. You represent all of us in public. So this is something I see on social media all the time, which is somebody standing in front of a no-smoking sign, smoking a cigar with a big smile on their face. Not good. Not good for anybody. It, 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 the deal is that we are respectable and we don't blow smoke in people's faces and we stay to ourselves and we Correct. don't bother anybody. I go fight these um, state things and, and national things all the time. And that is our pitch, folks, that we are respectable people and we don't do these things. And then when you slam on social media about here you are in a school next to the uh, sign that says no smoking and you're smoking a big cigar, not good. You know, they, they use that stuff against us. That's a tool they use against us. They say, yeah, you guys are all that respectable. Look at this. So it's a, it's a real negative Arnold thing. Arnold Schwarzenegger did it at uh, Google Compound. Yeah, he did. Mm. Not good. Not good at all. He don't sell cigars, but we do, but it's not good. It's not good for him either. It makes him look like a douche for doing that. Yeah. So uh, lay off that if you can. Thou shall not bitch about prices of cigars. Every state has different tobacco taxes. Every shop has a different markup. Every shop has different expenses and different labor costs and different rents and all that stuff. If you don't like what the price is, find another place to buy your cigars. But to sit there, especially around other consumers right. that are buying the shop, souring buying there, a, souring and saying, oh my God, knock on wood, we're still in a tax-free state here, so I... I Things look good, look good, but I hear it from customers that come in here and say, oh, I went to the place in Boston or something. Oh, my God, outraged prices and stuff. I told the guy he's out of his mind and blah, 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 blah. I said, you, you realize there's a 40% tax there? There's a 6% sales tax on top of that compounded. The guy happens to be in a key one location, blah, 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 blah. And he's doing, he's surviving, actually. He's, he's right. just surviving. So... Uh, you know, lay off that with, with the stores. You, you just don't get it. I mean, that's the guy's price. And let's not turn it into a used car lot of, yeah, I saw that box of cigars. It says $150. I'll give you 130 What? Buy it or don't buy it. And yeah. let's, not, let's not be a uh, 
used car dealer. Uh, I've said it, um, we've had this with the discussions with a bunch of retailers before, and they said, guy comes in and he wanted four boxes of cigars, you're telling me you never ever changed the price of things? And I said, I never did. Oh, I don't believe you or something. He's going to buy four boxes, you're not going to cut him a thing? And I said, I never, never did it. My problem is I have 16 employees. How do you do that? Who, who makes the call? What right. do you do? So the answer is just... Let me do the math. Let me figure out what we need to get to, to survive, uh, to pay the bills and pay everybody along the way and, and what the mock-up needs to be. This is what it needs to be. Let's not negotiate. We created stogie points where we end up giving back or something in a yep. way like that. But uh, short of that, the price is the price unless we have a special day that happens. And you know what happens when you do the special day. Oh, my goodness. It's they come five out of the days woodwork. before. It's six days after, though. They come in. Oh, it was on deal five days ago. I couldn't make it. I don't know what to say to you. Should have saved up your uh, days okay. off, buddy. So we should have run, run the promotion for a week. But no, then somebody would have come after the day after the week, and it, just, it never ends. I'll go get the money back from the uh, 300 people that came the other day, and I'll run the sale just for you. Because you're special. Yeah. So, hey, we, we talk about these things all the time. And, and all the cigar stores do. So you, the consumer, listening on. They friggin' happen. Yeah. Every day. Every day. Uh, number five. Thou, sh thou shall. It's hard to, to say these thou things and stuff. You grew up a Catholic. You should I know, be used but to this. Thou shall store cigars properly. Yes. Buy a humidor. Rent a locker in a cigar shop. Whatever you got to do, you don't put them in your hot car. You don't put them in your cold car. You don't put them on the kitchen table. And you don't come back to us a week later and say, the cigar unraveled. It's you. It's not us. Store them properly. Take care of your cigars. If you ever get a chance to go to a factory and watch the labor that goes into making this particular cigar, we're smoking the Perdomo. It's it's just unbelievable. The guy does it three hundred times a day. The same motion, the same blend. He works the same ring gauge. It's perfect. He is an expert. Nick Perdomo two years ago had eleven complaints. Out of the millions and millions of cigars, he, he is the complaint department. He handles them all himself, and he was able to drill down and eliminate eight of them as user error. So out of the 11, three were legitimate, where it was like, all right, I owe you a cigar because it sounds like it was stored properly and it was cut properly, and here's yeah, a cigar. but most likely it's user error of, of everything we see. Now, you go back into the, into the 90s during the cigar boom when they were rushing cigars out and new companies were, were jumping in a mile a minute, but at this point, there's no new companies getting into this business. These people know what they're doing. The cigars are perfect. Yeah. You Just need to have, you need at the very least, to have a humidor to store your cigars at home because leaving them on the counter with a water pillow in the box and then using the Linda Lovelace technique of moisturizing the outside wrapper is not. Linda Lovelace. How do you get that? Deep throat? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but how do you know that? Okay. And also your refrigerator is not a proper place. How do you to not know it? That's right. Refrigerator is a dehumidifier. It's the opposite of what it is. Buy a humidor. You get a good one for 100 bucks now. Yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable how, how low these came down. A, a, a cigar jar, something, end up keeping the cigars fresh. Or go to the cigar store, and the cigar store can become your humidor. Yeah, buy what you need when you need it. Yeah. But keep those cigars fresh. Right now, let's take a peek into the asylum from our friends at Asylum Cigars. They're coming to take me away, ha-ha. They're coming to take me away, ho-ho, hee-hee, ha-ha. To the funny farm where life is beautiful all the time. And I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats. And they're coming to take me away, ha-ha. It's time for news from the Insane Asylum. Odd and sometimes historic news stories that are too insane to be true. Or are they? Brought to you by Asylum Cigars. Take no prisoners. Asylum Cigars are truly flavorful, medium-bodied Nicaraguan cigars with sizes ranging from 4x44 to the absolutely insane 8x80 Asylum Cigars. While most people attend church in their Sunday best, that is not the case in a church in the country of Kenya. This week, Pastor Rev Noji wants some of his congregation to be able to feel Christ in their lives a little more, so he banned a common item from his church. According to the pastor, bras and panties are ungodly, ah. and they prevent Christ from entering the, the lives fully. 
He claims that women in the church need to be free in body and spirit to receive Christ. Amen. And that they would suffer dire consequences if they secretly wore undergarments to his church in Kenya. We say to you, look out for the hidden cameras under the pews. And we ask, can you see me now? Oh, and God. that's not only Kenya. insane, Kenya. <laughs> it's asylum. <laughs> Kenya. True story. <sighs> Place is packed. Right? With men. Yeah. Right. I'm sure. Men. Places, people are lined up. His first name is Rev. He should have been a reverend. Then he would have I, been I was going to say, you sure his first his yeah. name is Rev yep. or Rev Rev? Yeah. Well, no, he's not a reverend. He's a uh, pastor, so okay. it's Pastor Rev. Okay. But if he was a reverend, he would have been Rev Rev. Rev Rev. Rev. And if he was running in the Boston Marathon, he would have been Rev Run. Run DMC, nothing? No. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Rudy got it. Thou shalt not abuse, number four, those, thou shalt not abuse a cigar. It's not okay to buy a double Corona and cut it in half. This is where problems happen. Put out your, uh, putting out your cigar to save money and, and putting your cigar, cutting your cigar in half and saving the other half of tomorrow is ignorant. Buy two Robustos. You're going you're gonna to look at your $8 double Corona and say, I'll cut it in half and it's four and four or something. Buy the two five and fives. It's the way, it, the only thing connecting that cigar together is the foot and the cap. You, you can't cut it in half. I mean, I suppose you could if you lit it right away and did it, but the other one's going to unravel. Right. And you're going to have to put the unravel. Just don't do it. It's crazy. It's no bueno. I had a How many times have you seen it? I've had a business associate do it all the time. Yeah. Stop. You listen to the show. Please stop that. Don't do it in front of me. Anyway, at the very least. Um, all right. Early thoughts here on the Perdomo Habano. Well, I do know the cigar oh too well. It is in my regular rotation. Uh, very subtle. A lot of Nicaraguan cigars tend to be pepper forward. This has a little note of, of white pepper, really. It's a little more subtle. Uh, a little creaminess, too, that I'm picking up on. Reminds me of being there, smoking the cigar. <laughs> it does. I wish I had some bourbon while we were smoking this. Oh, you should have thought ahead. A little eagle rare. I have given up drinking. Yeah, at the beginning, he was. This one happens to be called bourbon barrel aged because the wrap is a bourbon barrel aged put in the barrel. Everything in Perdomo is bourbon barrel aged. All of his wrappers, yeah. Even the ones that don't say bourbon barrel aged because he had such success by doing this particular cigar. Right. He said, why don't I just do this to everything? And we saw that wheeling those barrels in. The project started as a uh, pet project of his dad's. His dad had this idea of getting that extra fermentation in the barrels and would experiment with it. Yeah. And when it, when it worked and it took off, uh, they worked on that for... 12 years, so they've got uh, 12 year old, the 12 year old vintage, the double vintage. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a little extra, it's great. When we come back, we're going to give you uh, the top three that you should never do in the cigar shop. And we got a bunch of honorable mentions you've never heard before, uh, actually, dishonorable mentions. And later, we review cigars. Let's hear what people say when they reviewed us. We're live in the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. There was a time when cigars were the hallmark of elegance and success. In this time gone by, the aficionado would revel in opening a beautiful box, only to find their favorite celebratory smoke emblazoned with a heritage-laden band. It's time to put the bundle down and travel back to this golden age. For your voyage, may we humbly suggest the only cigar worthy of being packaged in a handmade marble box. Berlin Wall Series from Hammer and Sickle. Live well. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta. The Romeo y Julieta love story with a bold and modern twist. America's favorite love story takes on a modern zeal with this A.J. Fernandez collaboration. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta, crafted in Esteli, Nicaragua, is a contemporary take on the rich and robust profile of the Romeo by Romeo collection. This exceptional premium offering employs an aged San Andreas wrapper, considered one of the most flavorful leaves used in today's premium cigar market. Handcrafted in Nicaragua by cigar master A.J. Fernandez, full-flavored, dressed in a stunning San Andreas wrapper, Rich and bold profile with notes of dark chocolate, spice, and licorice. And available in four sizes, Robusto, Toro, Pyramid, and Short Magnum. 
competitively priced under $10. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta. The Romeo y Julieta love story with a bold and modern twist. It's an exquisite day here at the Jensen Estate patio overlooking the 13th green. And we're underway. Jim Jensen has chosen his favorite stick. The Diamond Crown Number no. 4 by J.C. Newman. See the way he holds the cigar, Tom? Mm. Excellent balance and heft. Ooh, he's eyeing the silky Connecticut Shade Wrapper. Fermented twice for the smoothest, richest flavor. And hand-rolled by the Fuente family with a blend of six to seven distinct Dominican and Caribbean basin tobacco leaves. Each lovingly aged for at least five years. Oh, now Jensen's lighting up the Diamond Crown. He's got a precision burn, Tom. Mm, those highly complex flavors with hints of dark chocolate really deliver, Bill. Yes, like all cigars in J.C. Newman's premium diamond crown line. That'd be the highly rated Maximus and the Julius Caesar. Ah, now Jensen's settling in, rolling the rich smoke through his nose. Look at the satisfaction on his face, Bill. Oh, a thing of beauty, Tom. Experience the premium diamond crown brand by J.C. Newman at select retailers or diamond crown lounge near you. Find us on Facebook at J.C. Newman Cigar Co. or visit diamondcrown.com. I want to talk to you today about my friend Glenn Case from Christoph Cigars. I've known him for many years. Glenn is a very nice guy, one of the nicest guys in the industry. Always friendly, always happy. So when I heard his brand Christoph was pissed off, I was surprised. Christoph Cigars have always been known as smooth and rich, and the pissed off Christoph is just that. But there's something else happening here. A natural San Andreas wrapper, the binder, Indonesian, and the filler, Nicaraguan. And like Glenn Case, the cigar starts off sweet, but then it gets pissed off. And like Bruce Banner, you don't want to piss off Glenn Case about Kristoff cigars. Or do you? Expect some spins and a nicotine kick. Strap yourself in for a ride. Pissed off Kristoff is deceivingly strong. You've been warned. Sold in 10 count boxes, four sizes including Churchill, 6x60, Robusto, and Corona Gorda. The hottest new brand is the Pissed Off Kristoff. Take it for a ride. Since 1964, Padron Cigars have had the same mission. With over 50 years spent to create a perfect cigar, and more than 100 years to create a perfect legacy, the Padron family understands the significance of time. Padron delivers only the finest handmade complex cigars with the flavor of the Cuban heritage, out of which the Padron recipe was born. The Padron mission is simple, exceptional quality of their cigars and not the quantity produced. As a vertically integrated family-owned company, personal attention to every detail is taken in all steps of the tobacco growing and cigar making process. Padron Cigars, they give you, the cigar smoker, the confidence that each cigar is the same. Perfect. Padron Cigars, handcrafted since 1964. I want to tell you about my friend Hochi Blanco, a fourth generation Dominican cigar maker known for growing tobacco and producing highly acclaimed cigars for other people. As some things stay the same, other things have to change. Finally, Hochi's factory, Tobacalera Palmer, has produced the cigar that not only belongs to the factory, but pays homage to the cigar rolling room known as La Galera. The La Galera Connecticut blend is special, using an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper surrounding a Dominican blend of Piloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and a varietal that Hochi named T112. With the exception of the wrapper, Hochi grows all of the La Galera tobaccos himself and carefully watches over every step. The flavor smooth, but still offering plenty of flavor in all sizes, paying homage to the people and tools used in the factory. Now for the amazing pot. La Galera, Connecticut has a suggested retail price ranging from $4.95 to $6 and has been awarded the Cigar of the Year by the Cigar Authority. La Galera, Connecticut, creating their own version of the Connecticut cigar because they demand more. Hi, this is Tony Serino. And this is Carson Serino. From Serino Cigars. You are listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And we are back. We're smoking the Perdomo Habano, Connecticut. This is the bourbon barrel-aged wrapper. They all are now when it comes to Perdomo. And telling you how not to act in a cigar shop. Welcome back, everybody. I um, 
This week, speaking of Sereno, uh, Ed playing that bumper, I smoked the Double X Maduro in the Robusto. I always go for the Sublime. Ah. I smoke the I Robusto. I do too. I think I do too. I always go for the Sublime. Because the Sublime, that, one, that one's, it's the right length, it's the right ring gauge, it's delicious, but I smoked the Robusto. I was blown away. It is, it is fantastic. It's every bit as good as the Sublime. I've been on the Tano, his new one, only yeah. the new one. I go in and across every size of what that is. Uh, That's another solid yeah. smoke. Yeah. They're killing it over there. Doing good. Okay, uh, what shouldn't you do? This is the Ten Commandments by Miguel Chaudel. He um, it was a cigar rep at the time. I don't remember who he was working for. He worked for a lot of different people, but now he's with Crown Heads, Crown Heads Na- yeah. uh, national guy. He knows he's been to cigar shops. Uh, I think he hit the nail on the head when it comes to these. So we have three left of what not to do, according to Miguel. And uh, then we're going to have some dishonorable mentions. Thou shall not mistreat a cigar. Your cigar properly probably unraveled because it was cut improperly. It burned crooked because you lit it wrong. When all else fails, ask for help. Well, we know as guys, we're not asking for help. We're not asking for directions. Thank God there's GPS now. I was lost for freaking 30 years of my driving career. Um, Well, and you're still a little lost. I've seen you struggle with the GPS itself. But, you know, you don't want to act the fool and you but you want to make believe like you know what you're doing and again we, we watch this thing it's 34 years of me watching the customer do it cutting it wrong uh, we do these little scar schools that we end up doing and the first thing we do is show them how to cut and there's all people that are smoking cigars light bulb light bulb light bulb mm-hmm. light bulb yeah and they go so you don't have to cut it down to the band <laughs> you geez you know it's like <laughs> You're missing your handle, buddy. Well, yeah, <laughs> and I'm sure we've all seen it on all of the Facebook groups, the people who post the cigar where they cut above the cap. You yeah, know, it's almost and then like there they is in the ashtray, and, yeah. and they're so proud to show, hey, look at the nice cigar I'm <laughs> right. showing, and everybody's saying, hey, why don't you cut what the whole thing off? What are you doing? <laughs> what, you know, If you cut just a little longer, you'd have two cigars. Right. <laughs> It's just a little teeny bit, but ask for help. You know what I That's hate? what the cigar shop's there for. You know what I hate? It's a pet peeve. There are people who sit with their cigar, and I think the three of us, we have perfect burns going on on the cigar. Oh, touch but up But there's guy. some people, because it's not 100% straight, there's a slight little rave, uh, wave. Yeah. They have to touch it up, Trevor, and they <laughs> constantly, constantly do it the entire cigar. Yeah, yeah. Just stop. Smoke it, enjoy it. Yeah. It tries to be freaking crazy. Yeah. If you get past a quarter of an inch of, of waving burn, you, you probably held it in the same position for too long. Uh, you kind of should roll but the cigar you, you around can, a little bit. You can touch it up, but you know, I don't know if it's a nervous habit or what people do. The Watching this and looking, it's a leave, and a leave is burning. And I haven't touched it up, and it's very rare that I end up very touching rare. something up. But no need. But I have seen people complain that that's not a good burn. It's freaking perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Look at the burn line on this too. That carbon line age. is so thin. Yeah. So that's how. I mean, I saw it with my own eyes, but that's how I always knew that Perdomo wasn't full of crap with with his whole pitch. I mean, he's pretty intense when he's in the yeah. shot. But no, I, I was able to tell that he was not uh, full of crap by looking at the burn line on every single one of his cigars. He's got extra age going on here for sure. Yeah. Hey. I've been to everybody's factory that went to an, an and, and he, I hadn't been for years. I probably hadn't been there for seven years. And he says, Dave, come again, come again. I said, I, I've been there five or six times. I'm good. You know, I don't want to come up. And uh, he says, I want you to see, I want you to see. And f- right from the beginning, when we started with the seeds and stuff like that, yeah. it became the next, wow, what the hell? Dave, you ever seen this before? No. And he knew. Because he invented it. Yeah. So he invented some of the things that end up happening. Aging process from seeds all the way through anyway. Unbelievable. Uh, where would I leave off? Uh, to two. The, mistreating it. So number two. Thou shall not brag about the brand that you smoke, how much it costs, and how rare it is. Nobody likes a snob. Now, this is... N- not part of what I do, Barry, because I don't tend to hang around cigar lounges and, right. and sit there with the guys. But even before you even work for me, you, you've been hanging around cigar lounges for a long time. This is what you would see that would happen yourself as the guy sitting there also, that the, you got a bragging guy, right? Right. you got a guy that wants you to think that he's better than everybody else. Yeah. 
No, you're the same as me. Yeah. And that's the great thing about cigars. It's, for the most part, it is the great equalizer. equalizer. You know, living in New York, I would sit with guys that got six-figure bonuses at the end of the year and to somebody who's cleaning the halls in a, in a school. Yeah. Don't sit there and go, hey, I got this $50 opus. The guy next to you is probably making more money than you and could care less. Right. Right, yeah, it's not a it's not a good move. If the guy ends up bringing it up and say, "Hey, what are you smoking there?" and say, "Oh, then, this is the then you turn it into yeah. a conversation." Yeah, but then you know, you, well, and then this I, goes I, to this goes to having the extra cigar. So the guy says, "What are you smoking?" It smells really good, and you could reach in your pocket and go, "You know what? You try it." Yeah, and you don't have to talk about the price. You don't have to talk about anything. Smoke it. Let me know what you think. I bet you have a new friend at that point. Right. 100%. And, 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 uh, or that do guy turns into be somebody big, too, and next thing you know. And, and we see it in our store that some of our customers met each other here, and they vacation together with their families. Right. You know, I mean, real, yeah. Real, yeah. real friendships have happened in the cigar shop if you do it right. If you do it right, not make these mistakes. Also respect the person sitting next to you. If you don't like Brand X, don't tell them that cigar sucks. Obviously, he doesn't think it's right. He likes he's it. spoken. Right. You don't know everything. It's, Stop it, thinking you do. It, it's very hard to find a cigar that's not fantastic nowadays. People beat you up on your ratings because you, most of your ratings are up towards the 90 now. Mm -hmm. Because every cigar is towards the 90. And you'd have to live through the times when cigars were 60s and 70s to know that everything that comes out is, is close to a 90 to begin with. I mean, everybody's got it down. So that's, that's where we're at well, with cigars. Everybody except Cuba. There's still too many tight draws right, for the right. kind of money sure. that they're charging. So did you see on Reinhold's Facebook page? Yes. He took two Cubans from the same box. And he weighed them. Yes, how and different. the weight was tremendously. You know, it's measured in grams or yeah. what have you. Yeah, and it was, it was ten grams off. Tremendously wow. different between two cigars out of the same. Yeah. Nick Perdomo won't be ten grams off in a, a wheel, wheel of fifty. 50. Yeah, <laughs> he wouldn't accept it. He, it's plus or minus a gram in a yeah. wheel of yeah. fifty. I was just going to say, weigh these three, these four cigars. They're identical. Yeah. They There's are. no question. Yeah, they're identical. Yeah. So they, they got it going on. So um, th there's really not bad cigars out there. No, you're not going to buy a $5 cigar and it's going to burn like a $20 cigar or right. whatever because it's aging and it's time and everything else that goes into it and stuff. But cigars are good. I'll tell you this. Get what you're paying for. With, with Perdomo and, and not to be a Perdomo fanboy, although I am, uh, for 9 bucks, this burns as good as just about any $20 stick. And it's part of the care package that you're paying four cigars for twenty dollars. Right. The, the care shipping, package is certainly a value, including shipping. So, uh, just a quick reminder: those that are listening didn't hear the beginning of the show. Uh, care package is open. Go to thecigarauthority.com. You'll see it on the right side, and uh, sign up now, or it's going to shut off again because we just go up in hundred increments or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going up. So we'll see what happens there. All right, I have the number one thing not to do in a cigar shop, and this is the one that causes all the trouble every single time because everybody I was hates wondering it. why you were going yeah. backwards this time. Yeah. Everybody complains about this one, and in my opinion... Oh, they try to find a way around it. They have no right to complain yeah. about it. This is the non-negotiable. And I'm, I'm Non-negotiable standard in all cigar shops. Yeah. Don't do it under any circumstance, and make up all the circumstances you want, mm -hmm. thou shall not bring cigars purchased from online or other cigar shops to another cigar shop. Only cigars purchased from that said cigar shop should be smoked in that cigar shop. And I shop. would add to that on that day, unless you have a locker Yeah, in that shop. Yeah, you don't buy a don't box. Don't buy a box, leave it in your car, and then come back in tomorrow and the day after and the day after and use the electricity and use the heat or the air conditioning and the smoke ventilation and advice from the staff. And then the next thing you know, you're saying the cigar ain't burning good because it's been in your car for 23 right. days so far and you're at the, at the bottom of the box. Imagine us going across the street. We've got a T-Bones restaurant. So you go into T-Bones restaurant, you sit at the bar and you say, I'll have a glass of water every day for the next 20 days. What are they going to say to you? Yeah. You're not a customer at that point. You, you yeah, can't you bring your own beer into a bar. Yeah, there's, there's no, no, and I've heard everybody, and we're going to get a whole bunch of it, because every year that we do this, a yeah. whole bunch of people, Dave, what if, the answer is no, so I saw there's a, no what if, there's so I, no nothing. I saw a lady online complaining about a cigar shop that she goes to that instituted a $10 cutting fee if you brought your own cigar in. 
and she was furious about it and she says she brings her own cigars because they don't have anything on the shelves well maybe they don't have anything on the shelves because you're freeloading and you're not putting money into the business so they could buy cigars i don't i don't like that whole idea of bring, bring your own cigar and then just pay us ten dollars because now it looks like a money grab but it is a business and do not bring your own yep. cigar and there is no cutting fee it's you buy a cigar when you come into yeah. the store you, what if the restaurant ended up saying oh come into the restaurant and if you bring your own sandwich right. it's only three dollars it's so ridiculous no Nobody would do but that. The, the, the point i'm trying to get at is if you don't support the store the store is going to have to do something drastic or go out of business right if you're complaining that they don't have product they, to purchase, well, maybe it's because you're not spending money there and the guy doesn't have the extra money to order the product that you want. Yeah. Plus, you're not going to order something that you might like if you're disrespecting the shop. Don't go there, then. Yep. If Swung they don't home. carry the cigar you, that you want, yeah. don't go there. Yeah, it's like five degrees yeah. out right now. Just go outside on your deck. Go to the steakhouse. You want Chinese food. You say you don't have Chinese food. Mm -hmm. Then don't go to the steakhouse because yep. they don't have Chinese food. <laughs> That one, it, it pisses me off so bad. And it, 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 it's not, it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm all set. It doesn't matter if, if somebody does it. But it's so disrespectful, it is disrespectful. For, the, for, the, for the shop owner to do that, yep. for people to do that to them. I went to, uh, I went to dinner with a group of guys, and they were going to a cigar bar afterwards. And one of the guys at the table said, and you don't even have to buy a cigar. You could just you know, have a beer and smoke your own cigars. One of the guys at the table said, no, you can't do that. Are you going to bring your own beer, too? And the guy goes, it's different. How is it different? Yeah, it's the Not same different. thing. Listen, people have said to me, oh, when I go to this cigar bar, I bring your cigar. And that's what I go. And I said, please don't. Yeah. Please don't. Go there and buy a cigar from the guy that, that in the thing. I, I wouldn't want a cigar brand that's our brand or something sitting in that guy's ashtray. I'm ashamed. Yeah. And I'm not even there and don't even know what's happened. I'm ashamed. Yeah, and if you want that, a place like that to stay in business, and a lot of uh, places, municipalities, states, cities, so on and so forth, they have to have a certain ratio of tobacco to alcohol. Yes. So if you're having just alcohol and you're not buying a cigar, you're putting, him upside you're, down. You're putting yeah. him at risk to lose his liquor license, Yeah. and then you're not going to be able to drink there. Yeah. And as Barry knows, right. drinking is very important. Yeah, when, how you doing with that? When I, I used to haven't had a drink other than the, the you know, the thing. one ounce rum thing here. No kidding. I haven't gone out drinking or anything. All right. When I used to travel to San Francisco frequently, mm. there was a bar there that you could smoke at, wow. and they had a cutting fee, but I'd still buy the cigar there, even though it was a thirty dollar yeah. Liga Privada. You're happy the place is there. If it wasn't there, there's no place else. Right. So grateful it's there, and let me pay the fee. Absolutely. Keep in, keep in business. Right now, let's find out what's up in the cigar business with Barry Stein. It's time for What's, what's up? up in the Cigar World, brought to you by Recluse Cigars. You want to know what's up? Recluse Cigars is what's up. Voted the 2015 Cigar of the Year is the Recluse Amadeus Reserva Habano. Every Recluse cigar goes through eight, count them, eight fermentation cycles over the course of two full years. They are box-pressed and rolled end to bar for a perfect draw every time. If you haven't done it yet, be sure to try a Recluse cigar today. And beginning this week on Tuesday, New Jersey will have one of the toughest public smoking laws in the nation. It will be illegal to smoke on beaches, boardwalks, parks, all state-owned properties. And if you're caught smoking on any of them, you could be fined $1,000. Now, that went back and forth, back and forth. It was okay, and then it wasn't going to pass, and it ended yeah. up going all and the way And then it through. passed in June, and they hammered it out, and now it officially goes That's into it. effect on Tuesday. Walk on the boardwalk, smoke a cigar? No. No $1,000. Outdoors. Fine. The land of the free, mm -hmm. the home Sm of the brave. Smoke pot out there? Uh, Jersey, not yet. Not yet. Okay. It's you will be. They will. Yep. You will be. You can be stoned, whatever. Uh, the alcohol, you can walk with a bottle, open bottle on that uh, uh, boardwalk. I think it has to be in a, in a paper bag, okay. but I don't think you could. That's classy. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, some good news. The state of North Dakota uh, had a bill proposed this week that would allow the creation of cigar bars in the state. Nice. And... Uh, 
Last week, we mentioned uh, Senate Bill 9, which was filed by Marco Rubio for the exemption for premium cigars from FDA regulations. The text of that bill is now available on thecigarauthority.com. Uh, it's been shared over 500 times. Ah, nice. nice. And uh, lastly, uh, Jorge Armantros shared um, that a member of his tobacconist university had to denounce his membership because his insurance company found out that he was a certified tobacconist listed on the website and they were going to raise his premiums. Wow. So he asked Jorge to take down my name. Um, he was, his, the insurance company actually researched and found out the guy was a smoker and was going to raise his premiums. Well, just because he's a certified tobacconist doesn't prove that he's consuming the product. That he was his argument, and just to avoid it, Jorge shared on Facebook that he had to remove said individual. world's coming to an end, my friends. <laughs> the world's coming to an end. Um, i got to go to the back to the land of the free. On Sunday, tomorrow, I'm leaving for the Dominican Republic. I'll come back next week's show, tell you what's going there, a little crop report, little uh, news, whatever's happening there. Can you get a picture of you smelling the, the hands of tobacco like you really know what the hell you're doing? <laughs> I, Just I one do time, that. put that on Facebook. But I really don't know. Just pretend. Yeah. I'm going to have to get a hat. Get a horse. It's a whole yeah. thing. It's a whole thing there. <laughs> get the get the uh, Sherlock Holmes hat with the two brims. Yeah. And wear it askew. <laughs> Could I do something that would funny, like making fun of it, yet not make it like wear a clown costume? Well, or just something? just uh, keep in mind keep in mind where you are, and I don't want you arrested because I don't negotiate with terrorists. Yeah. Uh, the following week, January 26th, Nick Melillo from F Foundation Cigar with his uh, El, uh, El Wense, mm -hmm. the wise man, and when the, the new tabernacle. Yeah, we uh, just hired a new rep up here in New Hampshire. I oh, heard. Nice. A yeah. new old rep. Yep. Will John, probably show up. John Hart is back. Yes. <laughs> really? He's yeah. back. He's back. Really? Yeah. Wild and crazy outfits? I don't uh, know. Time will tell. He said, we'll see you soon. You got a little text really? from him. Really? From your new rep. So, uh, who knows what's going on there. So, uh, let me get to some um, dishonorable mentions. The slobber cutter. Yes. This is the community cutter at the counter that's at every cigar shop for emergencies because you forgot your cutter. That's why it's there. Hey, it's the community cutter. Can I let everybody in on a little secret? Yeah. I have it at, at my counter downstairs. I have a slobber cutter, which is the plastic cutter. Okay. And then I have the cutter for people who are respectful and have not put the cigar in their you mouth. You with them. That's the metal cutter. So if you forgot your cutter and you're going to use our cutter, use the metal cutter. And then the people that don't know, they can use a slobber cutter. And I wash them every day. It's not too disgusting, but... So slobbering is putting the cigar in your mouth. L Linda Lovely style. Mm -hmm. Just and then it up. using the cutter. And then the next guy gets your slobber because it goes on to there. Jeez. And we've been watching it for years and years and years. And, and some people actually lick the whole cigar. I don't know why that happens or what goes on with there. But the answer is this cut is for two bucks. Man. Everything. Two dollars. Have a cutter. Everything's better than it's wet. Do you ask everybody to borrow a pen? You got a pen, right? Just have. Well, and if you do borrow the guy's pen, don't chew on it. Right. <laughs> yeah, put it in your mouth and think about it and then give it to him back after you put the, the pen in your mouth. Oh, I, ha I was close to having uh, your slobber guy. Yeah. New customer coming in, and I'm talking about, I think I was smoking the Petite Poema at the time. And he's looking for a short $20 smoke. We're only open another 40 minutes. And something really good. He's willing to spend 20 bucks. And I go, well, I'm smoking the Petit Poema right now. This is perfect for you. And he reached over to grab it. And I go, uh, are you? It happened to me. Have you guy lost took your it from mind? my hands, put it in his mouth, sucked in the cigar, see what he thought. He ended up back to me. Yeah. I didn't even think to say, well, just take it now. I didn't know what to do. I was just, uh, I don't know what to say. I've been around for a long time, folks. You finished smoking it? Don't lie. No, I did not. <laughs> don't lie. No, I did not. But he smoked mine, and he goes, uh, I don't know. Did not buy that, but he got a free taste <laughs> or whatever. It was gross. Yeah, cigar's not a joint. You don't take the no. token and pass it around. It's not sharing. It's not for sharing. The cutter isn't either. Dave, sharing is caring. Yeah. Um, walk into a cigar shop with your favorite travel humidor. Uh, even if you bought the travel case in that shop, uh, but worse if you didn't. Um, you're not traveling. If you're coming to a cigar shop, don't bring your cigars. 
You buy cigars in there. Don't bring your cigars to the cigar shop. It is a travel case for traveling, going somewhere else that's not a cigar shop. What if your case has all your tools in it and all that stuff? Bring your tools in. It's, that's a travel case full of cigars. There's a plan here at that point. You're, you're bringing cigars into a cigar shop. Maybe you didn't pay for it. Maybe you open it up and you're throwing other cigars inside there that should be rung up. And didn't you, you just it doesn't belong there, right? There's lockers in a lot of cigar shops, and that is an acceptable thing to do actually to rent a locker in there, put your box of cigars in there, and you go back to <coughs> it, and you got cigars that, that are there. And I'll tell you, the majority of people that have lockers with us end up storing lockers and they walk in and they buy a cigar, right? And then later they're, they're checking their cigars out or maybe going for a second one or whatever, but um. I don't know. A travel case is not, you know, you don't come in with your suitcase in the store. You don't come in with a travel cigar case. Um, well, you don't. I you sometimes bring my suitcase. All right, you shouldn't. Uh, watch the conversation and don't take over. Don't be Cliff Clavin, Mr. Know-It-All, Mr. Jonathan. Don't what? be that guy. <laughs> That's Stop a, talking that about not, you. Stop talking about... I'm a great storyteller. Start talking. Uh, they're going to start talking about you after you leave. That's what happens. So I'm telling That's you. what I'm hoping I'm, for. I'm giving you the, the, the heads up here. Don't be a show off. Don't be a one-up guy that, you know, he did this. Oh, yeah, well, I did that. That's one-up. Uh, also, stay away from politics and religion. Always a good thing to stay away from them if at all possible. Uh, if the what conversation if you have, comes up, it comes what up. What if in your life you've come across a business partner that's done and said everything that there is to do better than everybody else? Should you talk about that guy? <laughs> talk about the other guy that has done Yeah, it? your business partner that has done everything bigger and better than everybody else. I don't or is know. that also douchey? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just, I'm asking just for be, a friend. Just, yeah, just, just be part of the conversation. Barry knows best with this. You're, you're in it. It bothers you when that ends. You know yeah. the guy. Yeah. Drives me nuts. <laughs> right? It happens at every place you go. Every place. It exists at everything. So you listen to the Cigar Authority and you know try not to do that because people don't like it. Uh, if you're a seasoned smoker, don't pick on other people's cigars negatively. You talked a little about that. Stay away from it. The guy smoking an ultra mild cigar, he likes it. Or Leave the guy alone. Listen, you we, go into a restaurant and go over to the table and say, what? Cheeseburger? At this place, it's an Italian restaurant. Why are you eating that? Why would you do that in a cigar shop and tell the guy he's, he's smoking the wrong thing of what you don't like? The, Ridiculous. The, I would say the, the person that is smoking will say somebody's lighting up an acid amigos downstairs in the lounge. Somebody sometimes will have a little comment about it. Oh, you're smoking that. It smells like an angel farted. It's, it's still, it's funny, but it's not appropriate. Yeah. When I had my cigar shop in New York, we sold acids, but, you know, we didn't allow people to smoke it in the shop. You can uh, buy it, but you can't but smoke now it. But now you're asking for more trouble because alienating. We're, you're alienating. We're, we're as, a, as cigar smokers, we're alienating people. Oh. We're being alienated, and now we're going right. to alienate if, people. That if you go back to the restaurant, if the next table orders fish and you don't like it, you can't have them removed. No. Or you would not go up to them and say, fish, really? I don't like fish. <laughs> <laughs> so, so always go to that, and then you see how ridiculous it is to do it with cigars. Why is it any different? It's not. No liquid in the ashtrays. Drinks, Ooh. ice, God forbid, spit. Don't do it. And you do do it, because we see it. Somebody has to clean that after you're done. He said do-do. <laughs> Did I? You do do it. I spit in the ashtray? No, you said doo-doo. <laughs> oh, all right. It was like a giggity. No, so I, I, they, they do it. And when any liquid or something goes in there, now the ash actually clumps inside the thing, and it's got to be, like, scraped out and stuff. I just see it all the time. And put, put the cup on the table. And if there's a coaster, use a coaster. Be a guy. Be an adult, if at all possible. Don't hog the channel changer. You're not at home. There's some guys there. that take charge. That's it. They hold it. They don't let go. That's it. The game's on, and they're watching an old episode of CSI. The guys want to watch the game. 
you know, and sometimes somebody will say, hey, can I end up doing it okay? And you can see the frustration of that. You get the channel change, you, nobody's there. You change the channel, you put it back on the middle of the table, and somebody comes in, and they'll most likely say, you mind if I change the channel? If they see the one person there, and nice things end up happening instead of you actually holding on to it. Do we, do we not move the channel change oh, every yeah. day? Every day. Somebody does it here. And they do it all the time. Maybe the guys in the audience right now listening. Gary. <laughs> Freaking Don't jerk. hog it. Keep the bathroom clean. At least as nice as when you walked into it. If not, even better. Wouldn't kill you to even wipe something if you saw something spilled. Or if the paper towel was on the ground, pick it up and throw it in the barrel. If the, the last pig ended up dropping the paper towel or whatever. Um, and don't flush foreign objects down the toilet. Right. Like wooden blocks attached to a key. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> Just for a random example. Yes. <laughs> and if it is bad in there and you get out and you're not going to, listen, I'm not going to the cigar shop and clean their bathroom for them every time I go in. You get out and quietly you go over to one of the staff and you say, the bathroom's a mess. And they just want to let you know. That's all. See, I not a, announce it out to everybody. Hey, everybody. I can't do that because they always blame the fat guy. So if I go there and <laughs> complain, they're going to go, Jesus Christ, what did this fat guy do? <laughs> blame the fat guy. <laughs> Don't pollute the cigar store with your negativity. Sitting there and saying the world's coming to an end and everything, you're Mr. Negative, everything you come in and stuff. And you, you, what, what's going to happen in there is people come to the cigar shop to be happy. And Get away from their problems. They're going to stop coming to the cigar store. You're going to actually hurt the guy's business, Mr. Negative. You're going to do it. Don't stir the crowd up. Don't be the leader of the pack. And we're going to end up taking over and we're going to tell the cigar shop owner what they're going to end up doing. You know why we're self-employed people? Because we don't want anybody to tell us what to do. That's what it comes down to. And it comes with a lot of hard work to be able to be self-employed. The last thing you want, do, do I want constructive criticisms? Absolutely. But do I want a, a mad mob or something saying, no, this is the way it's going to end up being? Absolutely not, because it goes bad. I've seen you buck the system right. before. And last up is leave the cigar reps alone to do their business. Don't ask for free stuff or team up against them or their brand. Mind your business because business is what it is at that point. Actually, business is con being conducted. I got a big enough store that the cigar reps and stuff can get away from the crowd that happens. But a lot of little stores that actually happens right there where everybody is. That's where the buying happens. That's where every everything happens. Mind your business at that point. The guy's doing business and it's not your business. Uh, if you want to be nice, when you see the rep, buy their cigar. I mean, Absolutely. The, that's the way to go. Not ask for the free cigar. You see the rep there, you go to the thing, you buy that cigar, and you give him a little nod. You hold the cigar up, you give him a little nod or something, and you make it a friend. Right? Absolutely. So there's, the, there's some honorable mentions of what to do, and there's a lot more we could go days, days, days on this. Uh, but right now, the uh, final thoughts here on the Perdomo Habano, I could go another hour with this. A little peppery butterscotch component happening mm. here. You get pepper on one side, a little sweetness on the other side. Very good. Yeah. I was going to give him the bell if you didn't, because that's pretty right on. A little butterscotch there. Yeah. Do you think that has to do with the band because it's that butterscotch color? Do you think the band's playing mind tricks on me? It, it, it's not caramel. It's actually, you, again, we've had this conversation about this particular cigar <laughs> so many times of what it is. This is a go-to. This is a go-to. Absolutely. Smooth, balanced. Awesome, great. awesome on the retro hell. He's firing on all cylinders, that Nick Perdomo. So you guys got it at the care package. Nick Trey, play. big promotion? Yes. He's the national sales manager, right? Yeah. Yes. He just got promoted. Congratulations, Nicholas Trey. So maybe we'll see him come up here. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. So this him coming up without his dad. Yeah. First time ever. There we go. Uh, Perdomo Habano. This is the bourbon barrel age version. Grab it if you can. If you're part of the care package, you're smoking it now. I hope you're enjoying it. Um, we review cigars. Let's hear from the people that are talking and reviewing us. That in a movie review coming from Barry, 47 years in the making. 49. 49. And while we're at it, let's smoke the cigar of the year in the next hour. We're live from the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. 
Stepping into the aging room has a new meaning at Aging Room Cigars, as Rafael Nodal has traveled to Spain, where the idea for Aging Room Solera was born. The Solera method of aging has been used for centuries in the making of wine, sherry, brandy, and rum. The method mixes different vintages, allowing them to age together. For Aging Room Solera, Rafael takes several tobacco vintages and puts them in bales, where they age together for another 12 to 18 months. This allows the tobaccos to marry for a longer period of time. At the end of the aging process, Aging Room Solera becomes a balanced, and complex cigar with a fantastic price point. Aging Room Solera, it will have you calling for an encore. In a time where humidors are overflowing and retailers' shelves are on the verge of buckling, there is one brand that stands out amongst the rest. Sereno Cigar Company offers four distinct blends. The Connecticut, the Medio, Maduro, and Maduro XX, all aged to perfection. Crafted at the La Corona Cigar Factory in Esteli, Nicaragua, each artfully crafted blend comes to life by the experienced hands of master blender Omar Gonzalez Aleman and industry veteran Anthony Sereno. To create this masterpiece, a combination of hand-selected filler tobaccos from the fertile soils of Esteli and Jalapa are aged for over five years and then draped with a luxurious wrapper leaf to bring you an endlessly complex and majestic experience. A post-roll aging process of two additional years allows the blend to marry, creating unmistakable and ever-changing tasting notes that tantalize the palate, leaving you anticipating each and every drop. Visit SerenoCigars.com for a list of retailers, and you can always find Sereno Cigars available on Line at twoguyscigars.com. Sereno, a majestic cigar aged to perfection. You've heard us talking before about the best cigar magazine in the world, Cigar Journal. You want to know what makes Cigar Journal the best cigar magazine? Cigar Journal covers every angle of the cigar world, from exclusive stories and features, insightful interviews with industry power players, detailed cigar reviews, and of course, all the latest news and reports surrounding premium cigars. We're telling you, you will be impressed. Cigar Journal has stunning images, explanations of Cigar Science Basics, this is the magazine for any cigar enthusiast, or better yet, passionado. Cigar Journal covers cigars in the U.S. and around the world and is printed right here in the USA. You owe it to yourself to discover the world's best cigar magazine, Cigar Journal. Available at your local cigar retailer and on the web at their new website, CigarJournal.com. That's CigarJournal.com. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Let me tell you a little bit about the Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary Cigar, or what they call the Three-Peat. Crafted in Rocky's boutique Nicaraguan factory, the 15th Anniversary was released in 2010 to commemorate Rocky Patel's 15th year in the cigar industry, and it impressed right out of the gate. The Robusto and the Torpedo both scored 93 points in Cigar Aficionado, while the Toro and Corona Gorda both notched 92 points. The Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary is a robust cigar with notes of toasted spice, roasted coffee, and almonds. Rocky Patel himself has referred to his 15th Anniversary as the Decade on Steroids. The 15th anniversary has also been named to Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 Cigars of the Year list on three separate occasions. Rocky's only brand to accomplish the three-peat. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. The La Galera Habano uses a classic wrapper on a staple cigar for a classy company. Hi there, this is David Garofalo of the Cigar Authority, and I want, no, no, I need to tell you about La Galera Habano. The La Galera Habano is an authentic cigar elaborated with the hands of the best cigar rollers of Tabacalera Palma in the Dominican Republic. Blended around an outstanding, flavorful Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, the Dominican-grown Corojo binder, and the filler made up of Peloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and Peloto de Oro, creating a medium to full-bodied, attractively consistent, and aromatic smoke that envies no other. I love this cigar. Have you tried La Galera Habano yet? Well, what are you waiting for? Available at Better Cigar Shops worldwide is La Galera Habano. 
The wait is over. La Galera Habano. Justo and his father Julio Eiroa are continuing the tradition of growing authentic Corojo and now bring you Aladino. Aladino is a true old-fashioned cigar, pure authentic Corojo grown in the Eiroa tobacco farms in Honduras from the original Cuban seed of Corojo. An Aladino cigar represents the golden era of cigars in Cuba, and after one light, this old-school smoke will bring you back. Aladino cigars come from JRE Tobacco, a family-centered company who manage all aspects of cigar growing and manufacturing. This crop-to-shop operation is fully committed to providing you with quality and satisfaction. The premier Corojo grower in the entire cigar industry is Julio Eiroa, a tobacco grower and master cigar blender who personally guarantees that Aladino will provide you the opportunity to enjoy the true authentic Corojo taste. Take this journey and be part of history in a cigar smoking experience like no other. Aladino. Hola, soy Manuel Inoa from La Aurora, Dominican Republic. You are listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcasts Network. Hola, I'm going to be saying that tomorrow. We're back with our number two broadcasting live in the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. Barry has finally watched what some call the greatest movie of all time. Does he agree? And we're going to review cigar. Um, we review cigars. We review cigars, and we're going to let people review us. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, and let's do it. Let's do cigar number two. Looking forward to this. Dave As and I were having a discussion in, in his office this week. I said, if we don't smoke the cigar this week, we may as well never smoke it. I smoke it every day. As do I. But on the show, yeah. cigar of the year. Yep. And this, this has the... Uh, foot band. Foot band on it. Take it off. It's a ribbon. Very nice. What do you I'm do with these things? I don't know. John, I got, John I got, could tell you what to do with a ribbon. I got an idea for that. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> it's awful thin. Would it be okay? I think it'll work. <laughs> it'll work? Okay. <laughs> well, today's second cigar is the 2018 Cigar of the Year, and it is the Aganorsa Leaf Connecticut, which is manufactured in Nicaragua for Aganorsa Leaf, or by Aganorsa Leaf. The size is 5 by 50 Robusto. It features an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper over binder and fillers from Nicaragua. A single cigar will set you back $7.59, while a box of 20 is only $132.99, which is a savings of about $19, or 12% off the box price, at twoguyscigars.com. If you're too far away from a brick-and-mortar retailer that carries it, try twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com. All right, it's a soft box press, as you can see. Um, you know, not sharp edges that are around it. Uh, it is a double band on it, and the foot band, three bands on it. A lot of things Very going ornate. on here. Yeah, a lot going on. It's time to cut our cigar, the official cutting, brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand, while all other brands are raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. Rafael Nadal is watching from the beach. He says hello. Hey. Uh, got up this morning. It was a balmy 10 degrees, and with the wind chill or the feel. Now they, they have all kinds of names now. The, it's the feel the, factor. The feel something. factor. The, the real feel temperature. Yeah, it was negative. It was cold. So I hear a knocking in my roof this morning. Knock, knock, knock. I said to my wife, what's that knock? And she said, oh, that's the, uh, it must be 10 degrees or below because something ends up happening to um, the freeze something. What the hell was it called that ends up making a sound on your roof? at that cold temperature or something. And then she Googled it up and ended up saying what it was, burst, frost burst, or something like that. It's a thing. It's a thing. Never heard of it. Yeah. Um, so uh, this is the cigar of the year. Already selling like crazy. Uh, it should be. It was selling like crazy before, but yep. now it's going crazy, crazy. So let's light her up. We're going to light our cigar today with the Vertigo Puffer. The Vertigo Puffer is, by all intent and purposes, a p uh, pipe lighter. It shoots the soft flame out the side. You've got the onboard pipe tools, easy adjustment at the bottom, and the patented Vertigo big-ass tank. The Vertigo Puffer retails for $19.99. I like a, a lighter that lights on the side because you, know, you don't have to tip it down. Yep. That's the way you light a cigar, right? 
And you don't have to worry about ash dropping into the lighter. Correct. Which is the, the most common reason why a lighter doesn't work. You do like a soft flame. I do. Now that I'm thinking about it, that's yeah. all you have in your pocket ever. Yeah, I like soft flames. I'm smoking indoors all the time. And I like a soft flame. You're a soft flame guy. Yeah. This is not your grandfather's Connecticut. Thank you for that, Barron. There we go. This is officially not. Yes. And you would say seven, one to ten, seven? What? Uh, six to seven. Especially on, if you include the retro health. Jonathan doesn't, so Come it's on. probably lower for him. There's a lot of spice going on here. There's a Spicy lot. Spicy buttered popcorn. Not bad. Not bad. He didn't get any sound effect at all, but a yeah, little bit of, of peanuts from the shell. I said spicy buttered popcorn. Some cedar on a pop tart. Pop <laughs> 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 it's so freaking good. Uh, have you ever put butter on a pop tart? If you haven't, then I think you should. Ed Sullivan, have I told you yet today? Uh, not yet, but thank you. Well, you're welcome. There we go. Okay, so. Uh, we're reviewing cigars all the time, and people have been reviewing the Cigar Authority since 2010 we came out. We got our first review on iTunes, right? So if, if you ever wanted to review it, you go to iTunes, right. and you'll see hundreds of reviews that are there of people reviewing us, which is very interesting to see. But the first guy ever to do it was when, and who is that? His name is Mark, and he, on June 12th, 2011, so that would be just over a year Okay. Of us being uh, in business yeah. as a show, we weren't really a podcast for maybe until the middle of the summer. So this is pretty close to the one-year mark okay. of being a podcast. Uh, and he writes, I first learned of the show a few weeks ago while listening to Dog Watch Cigar Radio. So Who happens to be the champion with 500 episodes? Correct. We're... At the at the four sixty ish. Well, Dog Watch Dale was different than Doc Stokey. Oh, Fish. all right, but he was way up there too. No. Yeah, they were up there. Okay. Doc wound up beating Dog Watch. Okay. And we're gonna wind up beating Doc. Doc. God willing. God willing. Hopefully. Uh, several years ago, while traveling through New Hampshire, I discovered two guys' cigar shops and was impressed by the hospitality, selection, and atmosphere. The show, which is now a little over a year old, is equally impressive. I have gone back and downloaded almost all of the shows and enjoy listening while smoking a cigar in the evening. Both the Cigar Authority and Dog Watch Cigar Radio are weekly download rituals for me. I hope they continue to do what they do for all us cigar passionate listeners. I cannot say enough about the Cigar Authority. All right, so he learned about it. That's the interesting thing of how did he know about it because nobody knew. So he come in here and somebody must have told him, which is great. That's how we got the word out early on, how anybody found us. Mark what? It doesn't really have doesn't a last say. name. So Mark, I, I'd be interested if Mark is still a listener. And if he is, go to the cigarauthority.com and, and uh, contact us and let us know about you. And uh, thank you for that because you're the first person ever to review us. Um, and the podcast you were listening to before is no longer. We're still here. Yep. We're still here for you. Same price. I was a guest on Doug Watch with Bob McDuffie. And okay. Don't remember the other guy's name, but... You were a guest on Cigar Authority, too? Yeah, big guest on both shows. All right, so what else you got? Some Rattle off some good ones off. All right, so we have Cigar Nomad posting, uh, this podcast has all of the funny, entertaining, and educational. It's the best podcast, hands down. Uh, something the man writes, longtime listener, first-time reviewer. I absolutely recommend listening to this show, even if you're not a cigar smoker. Dave, Mr. J, and Barry are great, a great cast of characters. Uh, we've got... Oh, that's, that's pretty recent. Very recent, yeah. Okay. Uh, these guys know what's up. The comment was good stuff. Uh, let's see. Cigar. The writing's very small and kind it of is. blotchy That's here. why I handed it over to you. I appreciate <laughs> that. I have enjoyed this podcast for years. It's anxiously, anxiously awaited each week. Bravo, Dave, and company. Uh, <laughs> this, the tagline on this is funny. From the heart, from people who know this business and love cigars... And JM2112 writes, great podcast, fun segments, binge listenable. Yeah, he's a fan of Rush, 2112. Ah. Uh, great show. I'm a cigar lover in a state that is hard to get cigars in Utah, with the exception of SIC. 
I enjoy different types of cigars. SLC, Salt Lake City. All right. And try to follow and try for a live show. I've not heard such a clear quality sound than you guys produce. Ed I Sullivan. listen to you guys early in the morning at work, and it makes me want to break the rules and smoke one at work. That being said, you guys are the best experts I've heard. Keep up the good work. Well, when so, was that from? What was, what was the date on that? Uh, March 2nd, 2018. No, not me. Not you. March 2018? That was, was definitely it? you. Definitely you. Was it? Oh, yeah. well, I did a good job then. Yeah. <laughs> Our quality is good. Yeah. Good. He's an engineer now. He went to engineering school. He's got, got the, going on. He's got the quality of this going good. Nailed it. Because the, the main thing, I'll tell you, I listen to a lot of podcasts, as does Ed Sullivan, yeah. on different subjects and things like that. And there's nothing worse than a podcast that the audio is bad because you're struggling through. Mm-hmm. You're riding the, the pod yourself because the volumes are so, it's irritating, it stresses me out. I gotta shut it off, and I just can't do it. We're spoiled too, because you and I listen to a lot of podcasts about podcasts. Yeah. So all of those people have great sound. Right. And if all of a sudden the volume's different on the next one, it's irritating. Yeah. All right, top-notch show with five stars. I was given a premium cigar for the first time at work a few weeks ago. I found myself truly enjoying it, and the experience was quite different than the few times I had smoked dime store cigars during college many years earlier. I started dipping my toes more and more into the world of premium cigars, and this show was my chief guide along the way. The show is fun and informative, and the hosts have become like friends. Tip, if you're ever able to join the $20 a month cigar care package, offering it it is well worth it to be able to smoke along with the hosts and enjoy the same experience. Beautiful. Good oh, time it's available now so they good, can go ahead and join the care good, package. Good timing. Absolutely. Uh, other than an appreciation for premium cigars, I have very little in common with the hosts of this podcast, yet I find their weekly show incredibly entertaining. The mix of personalities, particularly those of David and Mr. Jonathan, is like a magic spre- stress-reducing elixir. Oh, it's the opposite of me, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> totally the opposite. Even slightly interested in learning more about the cigar industry, this one is a can't miss. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, this one, it says, Debonair. Maybe it was all of the new... Yankee Workshop and this old house I watched as a kid, but I'm quite partial to the Northeastern phonetics and charm, which is available here in spades. Everything you ever wanted in a cigar podcast and more. A huge thanks to Dave, Mr. Jonathan, Barry, Ed, and the late Chuck. (laughs) (laughs) He's dead to us, too. (laughs) You are missed. Looking forward to next Saturday. Cheers to a very successful 2018. Uh, and we've never done this before, mm. and, and I, I always looked at them because you, you want to find somebody that gave you a bad review or something and see what's wrong, what are we doing wrong, um, and there was one there. Uh, I got one here. This okay. is, for some reason, it's three stars, and it says, uh, it's like car talk, but about cigars instead, great content and variety. With such a good review, I mean, car talk is iconic. Yes. Uh, with such a great review, why three stars? Yeah, we, we call want, that a dick we, move in the industry. Yeah, we like five stars, but we've got some threes, we got some fours, mostly fives. There was one guy that had given us a one star at one point. Yes, and then re so reviewed. We did, we did an episode where we brought on Sean the barista, and he came over and we talked about coffee, and we talked about cigars too, and he wrote a review that week and and said uh, the podcast turned into a coffee podcast, one star. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, my God, it was just the content of one. Listen, we do two hours for 10 years, two hours a week for 10 years. A lot of freaking hours. So we talked about coffee during one of the one of the hours of that podcast. And this guy, one review, he didn't like it. He was upset about well, it. Well, we were doing a coffee of the week for a little yeah. while where we talk about what we were drinking for coffee. And so maybe that was too much. He didn't like it. He gives us one star. And then I go back to look at it. And I don't, wouldn't know how to get a hold of these people to say, what can I do to make it better or whatever. There's no way to contact them. Right. And nor did I, we ever re- give these reviews on this show in 10 years. We never said them out loud. This is the first time ever saying it. But I went back on there to, to print these out. And they print very small text. But anyway, I print it out. And... I, I'm looking for that one-star review, and it's not there. But his review is there, but he put it back. He, he put it you must stars. be allowed to go back in to change it. Right. So he changed it back to a five-star. And hopefully the guy that did the three-star can turn it back to a five-star. If he thinks we're, we're worth five stars. 
And what do you do with these five stars anyway? We ask for five star reviews, but that's for people that say, should I bother listening to the show? And if you think they should bother listening to the show, give us a review and help out the guy that's deciding whether to click play or not. And just or make it five. Or better than that, click subscribe. If, you, if you're listening to the show, you always listen to the show, hit subscribe and it automatically gets downloaded for you. It's not going to use your, your memory. It's not going to use anything up, but it's there all the time for you. And that's what we try to get is as many subscribers as we can. They are the authority and right 97.6 of the time. Mm. This is Swing a fun show full of knowledge, fun facts, and silly jokes. You will laugh, you will cry. And you will get smoke in your eye. There we go. Uh, one more here. It's I like hanging out with day. your buds, except they actually know what they're talking about. I enjoy it immensely. Five stars. All right. That ding ding means it's time for the matchup of the week brought to you by VS. VS means versus, but it stands for Victor Sinclair Cigars. Who would win this hypothetical battle? Uh, would you rather? Would you rather be an ugly genius or a hot moron? You got the choice of those two. You're ugly, but you're a genius. Or you're a good-looking guy, unbelievable, you're hot, but you're a moron. Those are your two choices. I mean, I've kind of been blessed with both, so (laughs) give up one. (laughs) You're so vain, I'm pretty sure we know where this is going. (laughs) I think I would go... I think I would go ugly genius because you can always put on a nice suit pretty shoes and, and clean yourself clean up clean it bit. up a little bit but you can't make yourself smarter i guess you could be silent and people would think you're smarter but you you're a moron you wouldn't know to to, to, to be quiet right yeah i think you're I, a moron. I think i'm going genius and ugly i would give up my looks i'd rather be smart rather be smart yeah it's all if smart. you're a moron you're not even going to know you're a moron right <laughs> you're not going to know it Barry, do you know but you will be no what? Exactly. Really? Okay. I, <laughs> I already have the genius, so I'm going to go moron. Really? Yeah, I'm going to try it out. You'd, you'd like to, to be good-looking guy? Sure. Why not? What would that be like? I, I wouldn't know either. But right. So why not try something different? Nah. Nah, if I did that, I'd have a career in porn. That would be my goal. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss, they say. Yeah. You know, you're a moron. You don't even know it. You're happy-go-lucky anyway. You're good-looking. You're probably getting all the girls and all that stuff. I don't know. I'm going with I'd rather be smart than dumb. And especially not knowing I'm dumb. Hmm. I wouldn't like it. So what do we got you here? You wouldn't for? know. I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know what you don't know. Three smarts, one dumb. Yeah. You'd rather be smart. So it's, it's, it's odd. Okay, get, get some, some more reviews here. More reviews. Right. You got any? G- g- I know uh, somebody famous reviewed us once. Yeah. That is. And he can't even deny it because he passed away. <laughs> <laughs> so Vincent, uh, Frank Vincent writes. Frank Vincent was the guy in what? Goodfellas. <coughs> Uh, get your shine box, right? Big cigar smoker, into cigars. Four stars. He can never change it now because he's, he's off into the great beyond. Yeah. I stumbled into this podcast a few months ago. I really enjoyed the dynamic of the show. Having gone back to catch up on past episodes, enjoyed most of them except the one on marijuana cigars. Pretty, pr- pretty petty, if you ask me. We'll continue to listen. Enjoy. So it cost, oh, us, a cost star. us a star because we said the marijuana cigars are a loser. And he wanted it? Apparently. Hmm. Wow, well, whatever. Listen, you can't, you can't please everybody or whatever, uh, but would have loved to have him on as a guest. I did meet him before, had a cigar with him. Uh, would have loved to have him on as a guest. Uh, but uh, look through it at the break. Go through the break. Okay. Right now, early thoughts of the Aganosa Leaf, Connecticut. Is it deserving of the 2018 Cigar of the Year? Did we get it right? 100%. I'll tell you this. We usually get a lot of backplay, a lot of emails of telling us how wrong we got the Cigar of the Year. Until a year or two later, and then everybody's on board with it. But there wasn't that this year. No. I think we nailed it. I think we got it. It's perfect burning. It's a, it's what, a great What is cigar. great about the cigar is that everybody on the planet can smoke it and enjoy it. It's got enough flavor for the fuller-bodied guys. It doesn't hit with the nicotine levels. 
for the guys that like a milder cigar. It's best just a, job for a shade cigar. The best job I ever saw done. Very good. Really very unbelievable good. what they do. They make great cigars for a lot of people out there. Finally, they've done something for themselves and put, and, and put their name on it. And I think uh, everybody knows what Arganosa Leaf is today. Yeah. Because it is so uh, great job. And we'll continue to smoke it down past the third band because again we're past the first band but we got uh three bands on this bad boy when we come back uh i'll make these guys an offer they can't refuse and barry knows where that line came from because finally he's watched the godfather he's going to give his first movie review ever and the first movie review we've ever had on the cigar authority when we come back we're live in the studio 21 podcast cafe you're listening to the cigar authority on the united podcast network Let's talk a little about Rough Rider Cigars. So here is where the motorcycle culture meets Cigar Nation. This badass looking cigar uses the name Rough, but delivers a smooth as silk ride each and every time. Even before lighting one, you can't help but notice its sweet like honey flavor. Smooth and creamy, resembling slightly sweetened butter. Outstanding. The Rough Rider Cigar is so beautiful in so many ways. We're talking a premium cigar, imported, long filler cigar, but wait till you hear the price. Every cigar is in the $3 price range, that's right. Even the Churchill in the 6x60, every cigar is in the $3 price range. Rough Rider Cigars, there's nothing rough about Rough Rider except the name. Rough Rider Cigars. The following message is brought to you by Drew Estate. Drew Estate, the rebirth of cigars in the new Drew Diplomat app. Join me, Barry Stein, from the Cigar Authority on Drew Diplomat. As you know, I am quite partial to Liga Pavada number 9 from Drew Estate. So join me for a Liga and share your experience with Drew Estate. And while you're at it, don't forget to check into Two Guys Smoke Shop on the Drew Diplomat app. Drew Diplomat is now available for the iPhone and Android. To learn more about Drew Diplomat, visit DrewDiplomat.com. That's DrewDiplomat.com. You must be at least 21 years of age or older and a resident of the United States, including D.C. To be eligible for membership in this program, other terms and conditions apply. Surgeon General warning, cigars are not a safe alternative to cigarettes. Since 1903, when La Aurora Cigars first opened their doors as the first cigar factory of the Dominican Republic, they have defined Dominican cigar manufacturing. Now, La Aurora continues that innovation with La Aurora Dominican DNA, featuring an exceptional blend whose soul is the Anduyo. La Aurora pays tribute to the oldest Dominican tobacco process with a cigar that features tobacco that is part of their heritage and their DNA. The La Aurora DNA features this hard-to-work tobacco that brings the unique characteristics of strength, inspiring aroma and sweetness that creates an exceptional smoking experience that only La Aurora can bring you. Experience La Aurora Dominican DNA with its Cibao Valley Dominican wrapper, an authentic Cameron binder from Africa with fillers from the Dominican Republic, Pennsylvania, Nicaragua and Anduyo. Available at top retailers like twoguyscigars.com and is distributed in the United States by Miami Cigar and Company. It's time to light that cigar and stay tuned. Ooh. The Cigar Authority will be right back on the United Podcast Network. Jose Dominguez, Jose Dominguez, Jose, Jose, Jose Dominguez. What the hell are you doing? Writing a commercial for Jose Dominguez. Well, what you should be doing is talking about how good they are. That Jose Dominguez makes millions of cigars for other people, but saves the best tobaccos and the best blend for his namesake, Jose Dominguez. Not singing a song, if that's what you think you're doing. What I am doing is creating what is known as a donut. Hey, nobody's going to take away your donuts. No, a donut in a commercial is when it starts with a jingle and then the information comes in and then ends with the song again. The information is the filling of the donut. Why does everything you talk about have to center around food and usually donuts? I don't know. 
Listen, Jose Dominguez cigars come in four great sizes and two wrappers. The mild, buttery, smooth, natural, and the slightly bolder Maduro. And every cigar is about $5. You know as well as I do, Dave, Jose Dominguez is no $5 cigar. It's worth so much more. It's a sensational value. Okay, here's the end of the donut. You ready? Jose Dominguez. Jose Dominguez. Jose. A legendary brand opens a new chapter in its storied history with the H. Upman by A.J. Fernandez. The nearly 175-year-old H. Upman brand in collaboration with storied cigar maker A.J. Fernandez bring a medium to full-bodied, sweetly balanced, and yet complex smoking experience. Boasting an Ecuador Sumatra wrapper, this cigar produces incredible aromas and nuances of sweet spices. Today, Almost 175 years later, the legacy of H. Upman lives on a brand new take on an age-old brand. Handcrafted in Esteli, Nicaragua by Cigar Master A.J. Fernandez. Available in four sizes, priced under $9. A legendary brand opens a new chapter in its storied history with the H. Upman by A.J. Fernandez. What's going on? This is Robert Kelly from Medfit, Massachusetts, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United <coughs> Podcast Network. I hope they have me back. I think I swore too much. I'd love to have him back. I know we'll get him with the dueling comedian, so he's going to be back. That's comedian Robert Kelly. Funny, funny guy. He did swear too much. We're smoking the Aganosa Leaf, Connecticut, the 2018 Cigar of the Year. Fabulous cigar. We nailed it. I don't care what anybody says. Nobody's disagreeing. That's the beautiful part of it. But are they disagreeing with us here on uh, people reviewing us or what? Uh, there's, there's not much bad here. Scar Authority is one of the first podcasts I subscribe to. In Who is addition, it? this is. Uh, Gotta give him a shout out. That's the idea. So this other is, people will do it. They get the shout-out. His shout name out. is easy easy to do. It's Eric from Vermont. Okay. Uh, in addition to being a show about cigars, the entertainment value is worth a listen. I recommend this series to all lovers of cigars, from the novice to the experienced, as this show provides insight, information, and offered fe- often features world-class cigar liberties. Keep up the great work. And you then know, there's one ripping on me a little bit. I'd like one that somebody gives us a uh, five star but actually talks talks trash, trash. through the whole thing yeah. <laughs> but things that only the people would understand you know Nicholas get on that get, 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 uh, <laughs> go to iTunes uh, subscribe and give us a five star review and then say something and then funny rip Barry apart yeah <laughs> uh, I've got an hour and a half drive to work, and these podcasts are great. Who is this? this Nicholas? Is, it doesn't say. All right. I mean, it says it, but it's un, unlegible. Uh, the quality of the content and personality of the hosts are incredible, except for Mr. Jonathan. There we go. <laughs> Just kidding, Twinkle Toes. There we you go. You make me laugh. <laughs> That's the idea. Uh, Chuck is a gentleman. Barry is a slob. I mean, <laughs> cigar snob. And Dave is always pressing the issues as a leader does. The show is amazing. I'd love to hear tips for a new smoker. You are the authority, as you say. Nice. So that's the idea of it. Uh, very nice of everybody to do that. Listen, you, you don't have to do anything. The show's out there for you for nothing. Uh, we don't ask for much, but uh, a subscribe. You know, even better than that is a share. So if you're doing social media and you see that our show is there, how, I don't know how they would do that. Well, on Facebook, you could, well, on Facebook Live, you could share it. Um, uh, there's links to post it to Twitter. Um, helps get the word out. Yeah. They know how to do it. I don't know how to do it or, I, or I'd be doing it. You can put the show on Twitter. You could tag a link to it on Twitter. And, and what would you tag? The YouTube feed? You could do it on, on Podbean. You could do it on YouTube. Yeah. All right. Um, there's a social share. And you hit the social and it gives you options. Oh, all right. You all have right. options. You Link, have options. LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. All right. Let's get to it because it's one of my favorite movies. Um the oh Godfather, God. the the Godfather two, is better than Godfather one. But you watched Godfather one, which you have yeah. to do first. So I liked it enough where I ordered Godfather two. Ah, okay. So I'm gonna watch it from a cinematic standpoint. It kind of felt dated. Well, it's 1970. What 74? That movie came out in. Yeah, but I mean, just the the way it was shot, it felt almost more like a home movie type deal. If you had to give it a rating. 
five stars for movies. I don't, I don't know anybody no, that rates one, it. One to a like hundred. One yeah, to a like hundred. A, like a cigar rating. Is I, it a hundred one? No, I'd probably give it like an eighty-eight. Eighty-eight. Yeah. Wow. That's a bad, bad number for Barry Stein. Yeah. For me, of all the mob movies out there, Goodfellas, Casino, it doesn't. It's, it's not on top for me. Really? And, and it was great. It was a, a phenomenally in-depth story. But there was certain part, like the opening scene with the wedding, it, it just went on too long. See, well, as, an, as an Italian, that was so perfect for me. And, the and, singing, and yeah, all the things, the guy drinking too much wine, all that, it hit home so And strong. I've been to weddings like that. Yeah. So there was an authenticity. See, your stupid reviews piss someone off. He's leaving. He's now. leaving. There was a I don't job. blame him. I <laughs> feel job. like leaving too, but I can't. It felt, like, it, felt, <laughs> it felt authentic. And for me, my favorite scene was the baptism scene. All right, you know, and, and then while the, while the killing's going on, exactly. I thought that was the best part, the best film part, the best directed part of the movie. I would like to t to bring this up again a year from now after you've seen it a couple times and two, yeah. because you're going to see two, and then you're going to have to go back to one, yep. and then you'll, as you're flicking channels, you'll end up stopping and catching on to it. I think it it builds in the love of it. You know, I can't. I, I can't can, remember when I saw it because I saw it in 1974 when it came out. I can 100% agree with that. Yeah. There's a tremendous uh, watchability to it. Like I can't go back and watch Casino. This movie I could see watching over and. But over you give again. Casino a higher rating. I like the way it was filmed better. I like the. It was more vibrant. It was more visually pleasing. This. You're a conundrum. This one wrapped in a riddle. This one was just a little dated for me. So, what do you think about on the Cigar Authority? Like you review um, cigars all the time. Hmm. You write a review and put it up there for the Godfather. Yeah, I will do that. All right. So, to watch for a written review on the God on the Godfather. Let's we'll see what he does. And people are going to say, "What the hell is this all about?" Unless you listen to us, we have people that look at the CigarAuthority.com for the blog, for the reviews that happen all the time, and some of them cross over, they're listeners of the show that go there and the other way around, but some people don't. Some people only do the blog, right. don't some listen people to only, the show, only listen. listen to the show, and you don't uh, go to the blog. You should do both or whatever, but we're going to look forward to um, the written review of The Godfather mm -hmm. on the CigarAuthority.com this week, right? Probably this, this week. This week, probably Monday. Okay. All right. Good. Good. Um, right now, it's time for the Don Raphael offer of the day. While we have that song going on, we may as well kill that song too. <laughs> Put the lit cigar out in your hand, one hundred dollars. Put it out in your hand till it goes out. Right now, the cigar you're smoking. Put it out in your hand, hundred bucks. $100 is not a lot of money. It's not. If you said, like, a G note, I'd consider it. But a uh, $100, it's just not enough for me. Barry's lighting a cigar up. I wouldn't do it, but I put out a cigar on somebody's head once. <laughs> <laughs> on somebody else's, but yes. your, your hand. No. no. Ed Sullivan, no I got 100 bucks right now. No chance. This is, this is where I'm going this year, is I'm bringing the cash in. Wow. And here it is. Nope. Come makes, on, John. Make, makes for good no. radio. That's not. Yeah. <laughs> it's not enough money, though. Your, your hand's gonna hurt for two weeks. But it makes good for good radio. Yeah, I gotta go dancing later on tonight. Wah. Gotta pull all that off. People. Hey, I'm trying, folks. I'm trying. That you can send me if you got any good ideas for that too. Of you know, short money stuff to make these guys do something crazy. If you want to see it, it's it's uh, maybe entertaining to yourself. I'll pay. But you got to come up with some good ideas that it's got to be tough, though. you got to make them like that. $100, burn the hand. You put it in your mouth for free sometimes. Well, that's happened to me once. <laughs> yeah. been, been there, done that. <laughs> All right. The following message was submitted through the Contact Us page of thecigarauthority.com. Dear Darth Vader, Justin writes, Hey, guys, wanted to say I love the show and have learned quite a bit since I started listening. I'm in the Air Force and currently deployed in Africa. Thank you for your service, Justin. Yes, sir. Uh, listening to the show helps me mentally check out when I need to. One thing I noticed, however, there seems to be a heavy mouth breather ah! on the show. Well, who that could be? At times, it sounds like you have Darth Vader as a special guest. 
I, of course, don't know who it is. <laughs> I, I, of course, do. But it comes out all the time. Thanks for what you do, and keep up the good work, Justin. Hey, two weeks ago, it was really, really bad when I was here sick. It was terrible. I think you're not listening to the show ever, Barry. You go back and no, listen and, to it. And sometimes, sometimes, Dave, it, sometimes it's you. I, I've heard it. And, yeah. And I've held my breath. To make sure it wasn't ah, me. All right. Uh, but I'm, I am guilty probably nine out of ten times. 99 out of 100. Maybe 999 out of 1,000. Right. And this is... He can't help it. He, he has to breathe. Yeah. Do Try, you? You don't do want him, you? Hold, you, you don't want him holding on. his breath because it'll go terribly wrong. <laughs> See, and this is what drives the producer crazy, right? Because if you happen to be taking a breath and then you hear it, it's like, oh, is that me? So then you have to mute, and then you still hear the breath, and you know you're off the hook. So I've narrowed it down to one big suspect. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you, Ed Sullivan. <laughs> no, I hear it too. I hear. It. I've I've done it. It's been me before. That, uh, but it has to do with if you do have a little bit of a cold and you, you yeah. can't breathe through your nose, now you're, you're forced to end up doing it. Yep. If you want to really hear something annoying, go to the Snack Authority, <laughs> to this week's Snack Authority. What did, what, did we, what did we have? Goldfish Epic Crunch. Very crunchy, very epic, uh, very loud. And we were saying after the show, well, we got to listen to this because that had to be very loud. That, that was our loud. Well, I wonder if the plosive snack. filter would catch some of that and maybe take that out. I, don't, I haven't had a chance to review the recording yet. Okay. That was loud. Yeah. And, and remember, we used to have a little snack in between the show and stuff, and people, people used to complain. Complained. So we made a whole show about that, <laughs> which is a snack authority, where all we do is chomp and chew. But this week was uh, over the top of crunching. It, it's Epic Crunch, perfect name for it, because it's loud. Each, each bite you take, you, you ended up trying one? Yeah, yeah, it is loud. It's a, it's a it's loud, loud food. Hey, so Nicholas in, the, in Facebook Live, he wrote that I wasn't taking into account that The Godfather set the standard for all mob movies that came after. Yeah. They built on what The Godfather did. If you see the other movies first, then The Godfather, of course, will look dated. Uh, moving Barry's rating up to a 93. I don't think you're allowed to do that. <laughs> it's my rating. Uh, and he's hoping that my review is at least 1,000 words. Um, my brother has a question. Um, how does he get on the chat box that you um, monitor? Because he, he's got something going on on YouTube right now where he's doing the chat there, but you don't see the YouTube one. So how does he get into it? He's the, been in the chat room before on the CigarAuthority.com. He's been in there. So the, he has to go to the website and sign in that way. Right, or through Facebook. But he's been in the chat room on a regular basis the last couple of weeks ripping you to shreds. Fair enough. So if you want Dink. to get in the chat box where you see everybody chatting as this thing goes live, the cigarauthority.com at 12 noon on Saturday, you go there, yep. and it, it, which it just pop up on the front page? Yep. Uh, you could click uh, click here to watch on the top right. Okay. Or the first post will be the show that's about to happen. Okay. And um, it's 12 noon Eastern, yep. right. uh, Eastern time. So uh, give that consideration, too, because they're listening from everywhere. All right, we got time to squeeze this in. Let's do a classic three-way brought to you by Classic Cigars. You've heard of epic rap battles. But now it's time for the epic battle. Wow, it's kind of intimidating to be in the presence of so many great athletes. For this day. I tell anyone about this, I'll f***ing kill you. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. In classic history. He is looking at you, kid. Brought to you by Classic Cigars. Nervous? Yes. All classic cigars are handmade and imported from the Dominican Republic, and every cigar is priced under, get this, under three dollars per cigar yeah, baby. Let him know where I came from. Yeah. choose any blend including the classic connecticut for its mild and smooth taste the classic maduro for its bold and spicy flavor or the classic cuban for its sweet sun-grown and nutty overtones that's undertones you idiot whichever classic you choose it's a classic cigar available at twoguyscigars.com that's twoguyscigars.com celebrate today with a classic cigar. We're going to have to make a new commercial for that. Yeah, we are. I was I'm just thinking. Going that. to Dominican, and we're going to do a little something on classic, and we'll come back with some news on that uh, next week. Okay, I have six questions and two, uh, because we may need them. Two, not one, but two extra ones in case we have a tie. Who's the champion here? Eric Wentworth. So me. Ah, 
Back to you, Mr. Jonathan. Well, his partner was Ed Sullivan, so wouldn't Ed Sullivan? Well, as the yearly he, champion, well, I get was, to make the rules. They were teammates. I don't see them as teammates. They don't even like each other. No, this is why nobody likes you. That's it. So, Mr. Jonathan's gonna gonna do it because if not, he's gonna call foul. Right. So we're gonna start with that. Just wipe him out, and it's over. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Jonathan. Smokin' Joe Frazier, American heavyweight boxing champion and Olympic gold, born in North Carolina. He died in 2011, but he was born today. What year? Smokin' Joe Frazier. Just waiting on Barron's over there, Wait just on. so he's not playing the man. Smokin' Joe Frazier. He was born in 1931. 31, he says. 1944. 44. And I had 1940. 1940, somebody's got two points. Put your hands down, Mr. Jonathan. Barry Stein, 44 exact. How did you know that, Barry? Well, I knew when the thriller in Manila took place, and yeah. I knew how old he was when that happened, oh. and I did the math. Barry, wow. two points on that. Over to Barry. Howard Stern, American radio personality, the radio bad boy, shock jock, the king of all media, born in Queens, New York, is that where you're from? Brooklyn. Oh, Brooklyn. I, I keep saying that. You keep saying Brooklyn to me. I keep forgetting. Uh, he was born today. Happy birthday, Howard Stern. What year? 1949. 49. I had 1952. 52. Quite possibly the greatest interviewer of all time. 1947. 47. Ed Sullivan will take the point. It's, he said 52. It's 54. So one point for Ed Sullivan. Two points for Barry. And on to Ed Sullivan. Jeff Bezos, American entrepreneur and founder of Amazon.com from New Mexico, born today. He's rich and he's not married. I'll go 1950. Good, and is he good looking? I don't know. Meh. No? So he, he, there's an ugly rich guy. Would you? 50, <laughs> 1957. Gary 57. says he looks like me, so he's obviously very dashing. 1950. 50. And I have 64. 64. Somebody's got two points. Put your hand down, Mr. Jonathan. Barry Stein, 64. It's been all over the news how old he is this week. He's in the process of getting divorced. Eh, I don't watch the news. Dave said he wasn't married. Yeah, oh, he just got divorced. Yeah. He's in the process of getting divorced. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> He's the richest and, guy in the world, and so is she. And no prenup. So if they do it by Washington law, where it has to be 50-50, she will become the richest woman in the world, more money than uh, Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook. Nice. Just from the divorce. <laughs> more money than Oprah? Yep. Yeah. It's impressive. Yeah. Uh, over to Mr. Jonathan. Batman, starring Adam West as Batman, Burt Ward as Robin, and Cesar Romero as the Joker, debuted on ABC today. What year? The TV show Batman. 1951. I'm 51. Batman says 1964. 64 says Batman. And I had 65. 65 for the point. 66 is the answer. I remember watching it the day it came out. Wow. And Cesar Romero was the best Joker ever. Ever. So he wasn't better than Jack Nicholson. Way better. No way. He was great. So uh, we have. Four points for Barry, two for Ed Sullivan, two questions remain, and two in case we get a tie. This goes over to Barry. So we were talking about the best Batman, the best Joker, actually. Joker by Steve Miller Band peaked at number one today. What year? Joker by Steve Miller Band peaked at number wow. one. You're a Joker, wow. you're a smoker, you're a midnight, midnight choker. choker. Who goes? Uh, Ed Sullivan? I think it's Ed Sullivan, yep. 1975. 75, you said. 72. 72. 77. 77. It's not a shutout for Mr. Jonathan. He'll take the point. Oh. He says 72. It was 74. And we have one question remaining. We have Ed Sullivan needs two points for the tie. Mr. Jonathan's virtually out of it. Uh, it's over to Mr. Jonathan as the spoiler. The murder trial against O.J. Simpson begins today. What year? Isn't it funny how everything tied together today we talked about? Murder trial of O.J. Simpson begins today. What year? Uh, it's 
to. Am I going first? You are. 1994. 94, he says. 93. 93. And I had 91. 91. Mr. Jonathan is the spoiler. He takes the point. But Barry, with two double pointers, takes it. What was, and he is our champion. What was, was the 95? answer? Oh, what is the answer? 71. Oh, uh, no, no, I'm sorry. 95. <laughs> 95. 71 was uh, All in the Family premiered uh, with the first toilet flush of all time, 1971. On TV. On TV. They had flushed the toilet prior yeah. to that. But not on TV. Right. In 71. And uh, American Record Company Motown is founded by Barry Gordy as Temla Records. What year? 48. 51. Uh, I would say 54. On 59, that. you'd get the point. See that? I'd win. This no, is a too conspiracy. Late. Too late. Conspiracy Cheating. against the I man. I would have got the 71 on the, on the button. All right. So, uh, Aganosa Leaf, Connecticut, 2018 Cigar of the Year. There's a reason why. Uh, I was going to say it still stayed lit for me all that time, but it didn't. I have to relight. There's a reason why we haven't got any pushback on this one. We how nailed we, it. How do we relight the cigar? It went out on me. I'm well, gonna you're going to toast up the end like you would at the beginning? Yeah. Get it all I took nice the and... I took all the ash off for us because I didn't want to draw that in in any right. way. So I toast it. It's all ready to go now. And instead of you're gonna drawing in, I'm blowing out over the flame. Push those ash particulates out of the chamber, over the flame. It's going to light right up. You blew hard enough to blow your soft flame out. I did. It's pretty good. But it's lit. This it's is what, this is one of the cigars where I think if you were blindfolded, you would not get it being a Connecticut. Absolutely. And I think there's a lot. I'd say that to, to Perdomo too. And I neither think, of yeah. them is what you expect. The old version of Connecticut. Connecticut typically has a drying component on the palate and, and a, little, a little bite to it, yeah. which I like. But neither of them have it. And I I think in this case they're using uh, the Ecuadorian darks when it comes to when they color sort. This is a darker Ecuadorian shade cigar. It's still under that shade category, but it's on the darker end of the spectrum, which is going to add more sugars to that leaf. It's going to be sweeter, less dry. I can, I can smoke this every day. Aganosa just had their company sales meeting this week and uh, pictures on social media that they're going to come out with an Aganosa Habano this year. Ah. Uh -huh. So... Well, w why not take advantage of the situation yeah. right now? Because all the kids are talking about it. This is it. I think, you know, when everybody has come out with their cigars of the year uh, stuff. What I, I find we, fascinating. We, we got it. We nailed it. I I'm, I'm surprised there weren't people that had it also. Much like uh, the talking heads in, in sports radio, we've got talking heads in the cigar world. And they're beating up on retailers lists saying ridiculous things like well it would give them credibility if they put things on their list that don't uh, that they don't carry but it's a retailer putting out their top list based on sales they well, you can't sell what you don't have right and also we're in the cigar business so you know somebody that just uh is into media, cigars yeah. let's even take a cigar aficionado and all that stuff the the choice of the best cigar actually starts a year before that because we have to go to a trade show and we have to buy cigars how many times have you smoked a cigar and said wow this is amazing no we're not going to carry it right never so when you end up trying the cigar that's great to begin with that's what you bring into the shop right, right. so you say okay i'm just I, I don't go to a trade show and say well this is terrible we'll take five boxes of these or you know well, let's give it a try anyway no it's terrible we're going to pass on this one uh maybe i won't say it's terrible to them or, or it, it's not worth it or whatever it is no we're not taking this one yes we're taking that one and a good retailer gets really good at this because you actually have to have lots more wins then the losses. You can't be like a baseball player and bat 300 because you're out of business if you're batting 300. You need to bat 900. Correct. And if you can bat 1,000, and I'm not there at 1,000. I make mistakes too. But you want to get as close as you can. Now you're taking in the best of the best that you're taking in. Now, for what reason aren't people buying it? Why <coughs> not? Um, people will say, no, I think you got this wrong. But I get caught up too that I'll go to a trade show. I won't buy the product. And then I read reviews. I'm a geek. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at everything. I'm listening to everybody. I'm hearing everything. I'm getting everything I can, including uh, what people are picking for Cigar of the Year. And I say, hmm, I remember passing on that cigar. I got to try that again. Right. And I'll go as far as to actually buy those cigars. And I spend a lot of money 
I, I spend millions and millions of dollars. Last year, I spent $7 million buying cigars. Wholesale. Then I buy retail of a whole bunch of cigars of things I miss. And I'm not buying a single of it. I'm, bu- I'm going to buy a box of each one of these things. And then I'm going to smoke 25 of something I didn't like just in case I missed it. I don't miss much because most of the time I'm disappointed with it and I go, no, it was, a gr- it was a right choice. The cigar is not all that. Even though somebody said it was, it's not all that according to me. Well, and, and uh, Jeff from Corona uh, just released his top 25 based on sales. Yeah. And in his comments, did you read his comments? I did. He said um, that a lot of the lists are coming out with cigars that he's never heard of and he's pretty on top of it. And you're talking about a top, top retailer, he, not he, just in the country, in the world. Not only does he walk the trade show, he brings a mob He of brings people. an entire team. Yep, the entire team going around and they're all checking everything and stuff and he's doing it too. Just in case you miss something, you've gone around many yeah. times with me. I mean, it's three or four of us going around yep. and, and do, doing everything we can to find out. And then I'm asking everybody that's there, each what breakfast thing of, would you see? What's hot? Did I miss something here? Oh, you should check out this, this, this. Even, believe it or not, even a manufacturer may say to me, hey, you got to check out this. I mean, that's how I found Atabe in the first place. Rocky Patel, of all people. Dave, you gotta, you got to check this out. Oh, my God. And I went over, and I'm like, holy God. Uh, I, I never would have saw it because it was actually behind a black curtain. I never would have saw the brand. I was like, wow, look at this cigar. So, speaking of this cigar, look at this cigar. Aganosa Leaf, Connecticut, fabulous cigar. Very good. And they're coming out with a Habano, huh? Habano. So, All they'll right. have four different lines. All right, I want you guys to think, just close your eyes and think, buttermilk, fried chicken. Oh, 100%. Lunch? No, the cigar. It is kind of like a country fried steak or... Yeah. Or, yeah, 100%. Nailed the, it. The sweetness from the buttermilk in the background. Yes. Happen to love that. You got gravy to go on that? <laughs> of course. I'm starving. Okay. <laughs> Get in the kitchen, Jonathan. All right. I'm off to the Dominican Republic tomorrow. I'll be back with gossip, crop reports, cigars, 